Empowered and Evolving, The Modern Woman's Guide to Thriving Through Divorce Part I, The Emotional Roller Coaster Chapter 1, It's Okay to Not Be Okay The ink on your divorce papers may be dry, yet the emotional fallout feels like a tidal wave that's just hit. Days blur into a confusing mix of grief, fiery anger, a flicker of relief, and a constant undercurrent of gut-wrenching uncertainty. Was this the right choice? Should you have fought harder? Will you ever feel normal again? The truth is, there is no normal right now. Divorce throws your whole world off its axis, and it's both natural and necessary to feel the full spectrum of messy, contradictory emotions that arise in its wake. The Elusive Stages of Grief You may have heard of the classic five stages of grief, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. However, don't feel pressured to neatly fit your feelings into those boxes. Grief, especially that caused by divorce, isn't linear. You might cycle through anger, sadness, and a fleeting sense of peace all in one afternoon. Some days, you'll wake up surprisingly determined to rebuild your life. Others, a wave of crushing loneliness might leave you curled up on the couch unable to face the world. This emotional roller coaster is a testament to the depth of love you had, and the significant loss you now experience. Permission to feel Society often tells women to be strong, resilient, and put together. In the aftermath of a divorce, this well-intentioned advice can backfire. Chin up and keep moving might as well translate to shove down all the inconvenient feelings and pretend everything's fine. This suppression will only leave you feeling isolated and ashamed at a time when you desperately need connection and understanding. Give yourself permission to be fully human. Cry. Rage. Find moments of despair in the mundane. Let go of the notion that there's a right way to do this. Combating the self-blame monster. Amidst the storm, a pernicious voice might creep in the voice of self-blame. It whispers that if only you'd been prettier, smarter, funnier, that somehow you are the reason your marriage crumbled. This is where you must draw a firm line in the sand. Divorce rarely has a single villain. More often, it's a slow erosion built on unmet needs, misalignments, and circumstances beyond your control. While it's important to examine your role in the marriage's end, Fixating on guilt serves no purpose other than adding a layer of suffering to an already painful situation. It's time to reframe self-blame into self-compassion. Recognize the strength it took to walk away from a situation that no longer served you. Remind yourself that you are worthy of love and happiness, and that your past does not define your future potential. You are not alone. As you navigate this tempestuous time, remember that you are not an island. This book is one resource, but it's vital to find communities whether that's a close circle of trusted friends, online support groups, or a therapist specializing in divorce. Sharing your story with those who understand, without fearing judgment or platitudes, can be a lifeline. Their own tales of struggle and resilience will remind you that there is indeed light at the end of this dark tunnel. Healing takes time, and effort. Know that healing is a process not a destination you can bulldoze your way to. There will be bad days, and that's perfectly okay. Each tear shed, each angry outburst, each moment of profound loneliness is a step, however small, on your journey. This chapter is your starting point. Permission granted to grieve, to rage, to crumble, and ultimately, to pick yourself back up. Let's build on this foundation, shall we? What aspect of this emotional storm would you like to explore next? Chapter 2, Rediscovering You For years, maybe even decades, you defined yourself in relation to your marriage. You were a wife, and perhaps a mother. Your identity revolved around building a life with another person, creating a shared history, and fostering intertwined dreams. Now, the ground beneath you has shifted and you might feel like you've lost a significant part of yourself. The good news? This is an extraordinary opportunity. A chance to strip away the labels and expectations and rediscover the vibrant, complex, entirely unique woman underneath. Think of this less as a loss of identity, 
and more as an excavation project of the self. Reconnecting with lost passions. Let's start by dusting off an old, yet potent question, what brings you joy? When was the last time you did something purely for the pleasure of it? Before marriage, before kids, if you have them, what were the activities that made time disappear? Maybe you were an avid painter, a salsa dancer, or a voracious reader who got lost in fictional worlds. Maybe you found joy in mastering difficult French recipes or planning thrilling adventures on a budget. Those passions are still a part of you, even if they've been dormant for a while. Now is the time to awaken them. Enroll in that art class. Dig out those dancing shoes. Carve out time for reading, cooking, or a long-forgotten hobby. This isn't about becoming the world's next great chef or Picasso, it's about reconnecting with those forgotten sparks that make you feel alive. Don't be afraid to experiment with entirely new things, too. Have you always been curious about rock climbing, meditation, or learning to play guitar? Now is your time. Re-examining your goals. Your marriage likely came with a shared set of goals buying a house, planning dream vacations, perhaps building a family. Now that you're on your own, those goals may no longer feel relevant or may require a massive adjustment. Take this time to do some deep reflection. What are your dreams, outside of the dreams you shared with your ex-spouse? Is it time to reignite a career ambition? Finally, take that trip around the world? Buy a tiny house and live a minimalist life? There are no right or wrong answers here, just your answers. Start by journaling, creating vision boards, or simply daydreaming with reckless abandon. Allow yourself to imagine what you truly want, without the practicalities or limitations you may have imposed on yourself during your marriage. Don't worry about how you'll get there just yet, we'll tackle that later. For now, simply revel in the act of dreaming. The transformative power of yes. Marriage often requires compromise. You learn to prioritize we over I, and somewhere along the way, you might have gotten used to saying no to opportunities, to invitations, and sometimes, even to yourself. As you embark on this phase of self-discovery, challenge yourself to flip the script. Start saying yes more often. Yes to that long overdue girls' night out. Yes to picking up an impulsive bouquet of flowers just because they made you smile. Yes to helping a friend with a project or learning a new skill. Every small yes is a powerful act of self-love. It's a way to tell yourself that your needs, your time, and your desires matter. Opening yourself up to new experiences will not only broaden your horizons, but it may also reintroduce you to forgotten parts of yourself who have been waiting to take center stage. Be kind to yourself. This process of rediscovery won't happen overnight, and likely won't follow a tidy path. Some days, you'll feel energized by the possibilities, others, you may be overwhelmed by the sheer scope of rebuilding your life. Embrace the process, not just the idealized outcome. Allow yourself to stumble, to change your mind, to try things and decide they aren't for you. Be patient and forgiving with yourself just as you would be with a dear friend embarking on such a journey. You are evolving into an even stronger, more resilient, and more authentic version of you that is something to celebrate every step of the way. Chapter 3, Support Systems That Matter You don't have to walk this path alone. While rediscovering yourself is a deeply personal journey, having a support system people who will listen without judgment, offer practical help when needed, and simply remind you that you are loved is an indispensable piece of the healing puzzle. Let's break down the different ways you can shore up this vital network. Therapy, a safe space for growth. It's a common misconception that therapy is only for people in crisis. While it can be a lifeline during dark times, therapy is also a powerful tool for healing and growth, especially at a major life juncture like divorce. Finding the right therapist is key. Look for someone who specializes in divorce recovery, women's issues, or any other areas that resonate with your specific needs. Don't be afraid to shop around with initial consultations until you find a therapist who makes you feel safe, understood, and challenged in a supportive way. Therapy sessions are your dedicated space. 
you get to unload the emotional baggage you may not want to burden your friends with. A skilled therapist can help you understand your emotional patterns, develop healthy coping mechanisms, and challenge any self-limiting beliefs that may be hindering your progress. Overcoming the Ask for Help Stigma Many women have been socialized to be nurturers, not receivers of care. Asking for help can feel like an uncomfortable spotlight a sign of weakness or incompetence. Let's dismantle that notion right now. Every successful person, at some point in their life, has needed guidance, resources, or simply an encouraging pep talk. Your willingness to reach out is a powerful display of strength and self-awareness. It shows that you're prioritizing your well-being. Leaning on the right friendships. Your existing friendships will inevitably shift due to your divorce. Some friends may surprise you with their empathy and unwavering support, while others might falter, unsure of what to say or how to act around a newly single you. This is a natural weeding out process. Focus your precious energy on those friends who consistently show up. They are the ones who listen without trying to fix everything, offer practical help, running errands, childcare, and inject some much-needed fun and distraction into your life. It's also okay to be upfront about your needs. Your true friends will understand if you are brutally honest with a look, I need some mindless chatter, not another deep conversation about my divorce tonight. True friendship is a two-way street be the shoulder to lean on for your loved ones when they need it. Online Support Communities The digital age has offered a unique gift to those going through difficult life transitions, online support groups. These virtual spaces are where you can connect with women worldwide who know exactly what you're feeling. There are groups focused on every aspect of divorce everything from practical logistics to the raw emotional fallout. Look for well-moderated groups with ground rules that prioritize respect and empathy. Sharing your struggles and finding a sense of belonging in a community that has been there can be profoundly healing. What to avoid? With vulnerability, unfortunately, sometimes comes unsolicited advice. Be wary of well-meaning friends, family members, or even strangers on the internet who insist they have the secret to getting over your divorce. While some may be genuinely trying to help, remember that everyone's process is different. You are entitled to set firm boundaries. A polite but firm I appreciate you caring, but I'm not looking for advice right now, can deflect well-intentioned, but misguided attempts for a quick fix. You know your own heart and your healing journey best. Building your resilience team. Think of your support system as your resilience team. These are the people you call when you need a good cry, a dose of reality, or simply someone to go on a spontaneous adventure with. Actively cultivating this support is one of the best investments you can make in your future happiness. Support systems are dynamic and will evolve as you do. Let's continue building strong foundations. What aspect of navigating this new post-divorce world would you like to tackle next? Part 2, Your Practical Toolkit Chapter 4, Lawyer Up, Wisely Whether you're facing a relatively amicable split or a contentious battle, Having an experienced divorce attorney in your corner is crucial to protect your interests. This chapter will demystify the process and empower you to choose an advocate who aligns with your needs and values. Finding the right fit Don't settle for the first lawyer whose name pops up in a Google search. This is a pivotal choice, so be discerning. Here's how to find potential candidates. Referrals, ask trusted friends family members who have been through divorce, or professionals you trust, financial advisors, therapists, for recommendations. Online resources, reputable websites like Avvo, Martindale Hubble and Nalo provide lawyer profiles, client reviews, and ratings, often with specialization filters. State and local bar associations, these associations often have referral services or searchable directories of attorneys specializing in family law. Vetting your potential attorneys. Schedule initial consultations with a few attorneys. Most offer these for free or at a reduced rate. Prepare a list of questions to make the best use of your time. Key things to assess. Experience. How long have they practiced family law? How many divorce cases do they handle a year? 
Do they have expertise in areas relevant to your situation, complex asset division, child custody, etc.? Communication style, does this person seem approachable, patient with your questions, and avoid excessive legal jargon? Do you feel heard and respected? Trust your gut here effective communication is vital. Litigation vs. Collaborative approach, does the attorney primarily favor an aggressive, adversarial approach or promote mediation and negotiation when possible? There's no one-size-fits-all answer, choose based on your comfort level and the specifics of your divorce. Fee structure, get a clear understanding of hourly rates, retainer fees, and any additional costs. Don't get wooed by someone promising an unrealistically fast or cheap settlement navigating divorce takes time. Questions to ask during consultation Given the basics of my situation, what's a realistic timeline and potential outcomes? What's your approach to negotiation and litigation? How will you keep me informed throughout the process and ensure I understand all decisions? What resources can your office offer to help me with the financial aspects of divorce? How would we handle a scenario where my ex-spouse is uncooperative or unresponsive? Understanding the process While state laws vary, here's a general simplified overview of the steps involved in a divorce. 1. Filing and service Your attorney files a divorce petition, outlining the grounds for divorce and requests for relief, property division, alimony, child support, etc. Your ex-spouse is then served with the papers within a specified time frame. 2. Temporary orders, if urgent issues need addressing, temporary custody, child support, etc., your lawyer can file for temporary orders, valid until the final divorce decree. 3. Discovery, exchange of financial information, asset valuations, possibly depositions, formal interviews, to gather evidence supporting your case. For settlement or trial, most divorces are settled through negotiation or mediation. If an agreement cannot be reached, the case proceeds to a trial where a judge makes the final decisions. Navigating the legal jargon Even with a good attorney, you'll encounter unfamiliar terms. Here's a quick primer on some common ones. Alimony slash spousal support, payments from one spouse to the other for a set period. Child support court-determined payments by a parent for the financial well-being of their child. Asset division, dividing marital property. This requires cataloging assets as marital, acquired during marriage, or separate, acquired before, or via inheritance slash gift. Mediation, a process where a trained mediator helps negotiate a settlement outside of court. It can be far less expensive and contentious than litigation. Common legal pitfalls to avoid. Hiding assets, don't succumb to the temptation. Courts have ways of uncovering them, and it severely damages your credibility. Badmouthing your ex online, social media rants are rarely private. They can be used as evidence, especially in custody disputes. Resist the urge. Making rash emotional decisions, while your feelings are valid, ensure major decisions accepting a settlement, etc., are driven by legal advice, not just hurt or anger. It's a partnership. The best attorney-client relationship is collaborative. Be transparent with your lawyer, ask questions, and take an active role in understanding your options. By working together, you can navigate this intimidating process with confidence, advocating for your best interests and a fair outcome. Chapter 5 Untangling the Money Mess The financial fallout of divorce can be one of the most stressful aspects. You may be facing reduced income, unexpected expenses, and the daunting task of building a new financial life as a single woman. Don't let overwhelm win. It's time to tackle the money mess head-on, one strategic step at a time. The Immediate Aftermath, Survival Mode Budgeting In the early stages of divorce, you'll need a temporary survival budget. This is an ultra-focused plan with the bare essentials housing costs, food, utilities, transportation, debt payments, and necessary childcare. Track your spending meticulously. Many simple online or app-based budgeting tools exist to help. 
look for every opportunity to cut expenses, at least temporarily. Eating at home, cancelling unused subscriptions, negotiating better rates on phone slash internet plans every little bit helps. This isn't a forever budget, but it gives you a clear picture of your non-negotiable expenses and empowers you to make informed financial decisions as you negotiate a divorce settlement or adjust your income. Understanding Asset Division The starting point for building your post-divorce financial life is understanding what you are legally entitled to. Laws vary by state, but generally, here's how asset division works. Marital Property vs. Separate Property Anything acquired during your marriage, debts included, is usually considered marital property and subject to division. Separate property inheritances, assets owned prior to marriage, or gifts isn't usually split. Equitable distribution, most states use this principle, meaning a fair split but not necessarily 50 50ths. Factors like earning potential, length of the marriage, and contributions as a homemaker are all taken into account. Complex assets, if significant assets are involved a business, retirement accounts, investment properties you'll likely need specialized appraisers and accountants to determine their value. Unraveling the financial picture of your marriage takes time and can be emotionally fraught. Your attorney is there to advocate for your fair share, so be honest and meticulous in providing all the relevant financial information. Alimony and Child Support Alimony slash spousal support, meant to help a spouse maintain their standard of living or bridge the gap if they've been out of the workforce. It can be temporary, rehabilitative, focused on job training, or in rare cases, permanent. Child support, legally mandated payments from the non-custodial parent for the child's needs. Each state has a formula based on income, custody arrangements, and other factors. These court-ordered payments are a key part of your financial plan. Don't get intimidated by negotiation tactics. Your lawyer will guide you to ensure a fair outcome, providing support for you and any children. Protecting your credit. Divorce can negatively impact your credit score, especially if there was shared debt. Here's how to safeguard yourself. Joint accounts, close them as soon as possible. Even if your ex agrees to be responsible, missed payments will hurt both your credit scores. Debt in your name, pay those accounts on time and in full. If you are struggling, contact creditors and explain the situation. They might be able to work out a temporary payment plan. Obtain a credit report, check for any errors in reporting. Dispute any inaccuracies immediately. Many websites offer free credit reports and monitoring tools. Rebuilding Your Financial Foundation Once you have a clearer picture of your post-divorce finances, you can start creating your long-term plan. Consider Income boosting, is it time to ask for a raise, re-enter the workforce, or explore new income streams? Financial counseling, if dealing with debt or complex financial issues, a certified financial counselor can be invaluable in creating a roadmap. Retirement planning, divorce often depletes retirement accounts. Seek advice from a financial advisor on how to rebuild those funds. The emotional side of money. Financial stress can exacerbate the emotional roller coaster of divorce. Be kind to yourself, and don't be afraid to seek support. Therapists specializing in financial anxiety or life transitions can help you develop healthy money habits and break negative thought patterns. Remember, this chapter is about more than survival. It's about emerging from the divorce financially savvy and empowered to build a thriving, independent future. What other financial hurdles would you like to tackle? Chapter 6, Home Sweet, New Home Your marital home holds memories, both joyful and painful. It may represent a sense of security or a constant reminder of what's been lost. There's no single right answer when it comes to staying or leaving, as it depends on your unique circumstances, finances, and emotional readiness. Let's explore your options. Option 1, Staying Put Pros Stability, provides a sense of consistency for you and any children, especially during an emotionally volatile time. Financial Feasibility, 
if you can afford the mortgage, upkeep, and associated expenses on your own, it may be the most practical short-term solution. Buyout option, if your divorce settlement allows you to buy out your ex-spouse share of the house, staying can be a way to maintain ownership of an appreciating asset. Cons Emotional toll, remaining in a space filled with reminders of your ex can hinder your ability to heal and move forward. Financial burden, if it's a significant financial stretch, the stress of maintaining the home could undermine your overall well-being. Awkward logistics, if cohabiting with your ex while the divorce is being finalized, clear boundaries and rules for shared spaces are crucial. Option 2, Selling and Splitting the Proceeds Pros Clean break, a fresh start, both emotionally and financially. It allows you to release yourself from the past and build a new space tailored to your needs. Financial gain, if you're in a hot real estate market, selling could provide you with the funds to purchase a more suitable home or invest in your future. Less financial responsibility, no more worries about expensive repairs, property taxes, or upkeep falling solely on your shoulders. Cons Market uncertainty, if you need to buy a new place in the same market, you may be facing higher prices and limited inventory. Emotional attachment, letting go of your home can be a painful process, even if it's the right decision long term. Temporary disruption, moving twice to a temporary place and then a more permanent home can add to an already stressful time. Option 3, Downsizing and Simplifying Pros Affordability a smaller home often means lower mortgage payments, utility bills, and maintenance costs, freeing up your income for other priorities. Fresh start, even if it's in the same town, moving to a smaller space designed for your current needs can feel like a positive new chapter. Decluttering catharsis, moving forces you to shed possessions tied to your old life, a symbolic and therapeutic act. Cons Adjustment period Acclimating to a smaller space takes time, especially if you're coming from a spacious family home. Limited hosting space, if you have children and want them to stay over regularly, having ample room may be a priority. Storage challenges, downsizing requires tough choices and may mean renting a storage unit if you can't part with certain belongings. If you're renting a new place, while renting offers flexibility, it can also feel less secure than owning a home. Here's what to consider. Affordability, factor in not just monthly rent, but also deposits, renter's insurance, and any increased utility costs compared to your current setup. Lease terms, understand the length of the lease and any restrictions regarding subletting, pets, or making design changes. Building a nest, renters have limitations when it comes to decorating but you can still make a space feel like yours with strategic furniture purchases, plants, and personal touches. Creating a Sanctuary Regardless of whether you stay, sell, or rent, transforming your space into a place of refuge is vital. Purge and cleanse, get rid of items that trigger negative memories. Give your space a deep clean and fresh coat of paint if possible. Invest in comfort, new bedding, cozy throws, or that reading chair you've always wanted treat yourself to some items associated with solace and fresh energy. Scents and sounds, soothing candles, essential oil diffusers, or a favorite playlist can shift the ambience, making your home your haven. The housing question is complex, and there's no shame in changing your mind as your financial or emotional state shifts. What logistical or practical aspects of this housing transition would you like to delve into next? Part 3, Stronger on the Other Side Chapter 7, CO Parenting Conundrums If you have children with your ex-spouse, a whole new layer of challenges and potential cooperation emerges. Even the most amicable divorces will have bumps along the road when it comes to CO parenting. The goal, however, is to prioritize your child's emotional needs and foster a stable, consistent environment, even if you live in separate homes. Communication, the bedrock of successful CO parenting. Finding ways to communicate effectively with your ex might be one of the most difficult post-divorce adjustments. Here's how to set the foundation. Business, not personal, 
limit communication to child-related logistics schedules, health updates, and school matters. Resist rehashing old relationship wounds. Choose your medium wisely, texting or email creates a paper trail and curbs emotionally driven outbursts compared to phone conversations. Special CO parenting apps like Our Family Wizard provide organized, court admissible communication. Biff Response When your ex pushes buttons, use the Biff Response brief, informative, friendly, and firm. Example Bobby's soccer game has been rescheduled for 5 p.m. I'll pick him up from school. Mediation matters, if direct communication consistently leads to conflict, consider mediation, especially for high-stakes decisions like education or medical choices. Setting clear boundaries. Boundaries are essential for peaceful CO parenting. Discuss and agree on the following. The exchange zone. Neutral public spaces for child handoffs can decrease tension. Avoid pick UPS and drop offs at each other's homes if it's emotionally charged. Schedule and changes having a predictable schedule is crucial for kids. Agree on a method, shared calendar, app, to communicate changes, with sufficient notice when possible. New partners when and how will you introduce new significant others to the children? Consider having individual conversations with your kids before a formal introduction. Major decisions, outline how decisions about schooling, religious upbringing, extracurricular activities, or significant medical procedures will be jointly made. When your ex plays dirty. Even with the best intentions, difficult exes are a reality. Here's how to handle common scenarios. The bad mouther, don't engage. Simply state. It's important to me that we speak respectfully about each other in front of the kids. Can we focus on Sarah's upcoming field trip? Chronic unreliability, document missed pick UPS, no shows for events, and broken promises. Stick to court ordered plans, and seek professional advice if needed to address patterns that harm your child. Parental alienation, this refers to one parent's attempts to damage the child's relationship with the other parent. If you suspect this, immediately document instances and consult an attorney specializing in child custody. Remember, you cannot control your ex's behavior, but you can control how you react. Helping your children adjust. CO parenting is tough on adults, but it impacts your children even more. Help them navigate this upheaval by Unified front, avoid criticizing your ex in front of your kids even if you disagree with their parenting choices. Present a united front on major rules and expectations. Open communication, let your children know it's okay to feel confused, sad, or angry about the divorce. Reassure them that they are loved by both parents, no matter what. Age-appropriate explanations, tailor conversations about the divorce to your child's age and avoid placing blame. Focus on the practical changes that will affect them. Therapy and support, if your child is struggling, consider child-centered therapy or support groups for children of divorce. Protecting your own peace. CO parenting requires a long-term perspective. It will get easier with time. Make your own well-being a priority, as your emotional state directly impacts your child. Support system. Lean on trusted friends and family or a therapist skilled in CO parenting issues. Mindful parenting, mindfulness techniques can help you stay grounded when tensions are high. Celebrate the wins, even small victories of successful communication or smooth transitions with your ex deserve acknowledgement. This chapter, perhaps more than others, requires constant re-evaluation as it's an evolving process. Let's continue building. What related topics would you like to explore next? Options might include navigating blended families, legal considerations for custody, or the importance of self-care for CO parenting parents. Chapter 8, Self-Care Equals Superpower Think of post-divorce self-care as the oxygen mask you must put on yourself before assisting others. It's tempting to fall into the trap of prioritizing everyone's needs but your own. However, Neglecting your basic well-being will inevitably lead to burnout, resentment, and an even longer road to recovery. Self-care isn't selfish, 
it's a strategic investment in your future happiness and resilience. The foundational pillars, sleep and nutrition. When you're emotionally depleted, the fundamentals are the first to go. You skimp on sleep, crave comforting junk food, and skip those workouts you used to enjoy. Let's change that, starting now. The power of restorative sleep, aim for 7 to 8 hours of quality sleep most nights. Establish a pre-sleep routine warm bath, no screens an hour before bed, or reading with calming music. If racing thoughts keep you up, try a guided sleep meditation or a few minutes of journaling to get worries out of your head. Fueling your body, not your stress, opt for nourishing whole foods plenty of fruits, vegetables, lean protein, and whole grains. Limit those sugary, processed foods that offer a quick hit of energy followed by an exhausting crash. Make time for breakfast, even if it's something simple, and resist skipping meals due to a busy or emotionally fraught day. Hydration is key, water is essential for both physical and mental well-being. Aim for around 8 glasses a day, herbal teas count. Carry a reusable water bottle as a reminder. Movement as medicine, even moderate exercise brisk walks, dancing, yoga releases mood elevating endorphins, reduces stress and improves sleep. Find something you enjoy to make it a sustainable habit. Stress Management Toolkit Divorce puts you through the emotional and physical ringer. Here are tools to calm your nervous system and find moments of peace, even in chaos. Deep breathing, simple but potent. When you feel overwhelmed, a few minutes of focused deep breathing can calm the heart rate and signal your body that you're safe. Look up techniques like box breathing or diaphragmatic breathing. Progressive muscle relaxation, this involves systematically tensing and releasing different muscle groups, bringing awareness to sensations in your body and easing physical tension. Many guided audio exercises are available for free online. Nature therapy, spending time outdoors, even just a 20-minute walk in a park, lowers stress hormones, boosts immunity and improves your mood. Journaling, a private place to vent, make sense of your emotions, and track patterns. Some find solace in gratitude journaling, where you focus on what's going right in your life for a shift in perspective. Mindfulness and Meditation Mindfulness is about paying attention to the present moment without judgment. It's a powerful antidote to the regret of the past or anxiety about the future. Start small, even 5 to 10 minutes of focused meditation can be transformative. Apps like Headspace or Calm offer guided meditations for specific needs like anxiety relief, forgiveness, or self-compassion. Body Scan Meditation Start by focusing on your breath, then gradually bring awareness to different parts of your body, noticing any sensations without trying to change them. This helps you become more attuned to subtle cues of stress in your body. Mindful Walking Leave the headphones at home. Focus on your steps the feeling of the ground beneath you, sights and sounds around you. It brings you out of your head and into the present moment. Permission to feel the feels. While self-care is about fostering well-being, it also includes making space for uncomfortable emotions. Bottling up anger, sadness or disappointment makes them intensify. Consider. Safe release, a good cry, screaming into a pillow or intense physical activity can be cathartic. Find healthy ways to express and release bottled up emotions. Creative expression, journaling, drawing, painting, or playing a musical instrument can help you tap into and process emotions that words may not capture. Don't go it alone. Self-care is an ongoing practice, not something you check off your to-do list. There will be great days and days when getting out of bed feels like a Herculean feat. Celebrate the wins, however small. Be kind to yourself on the hard days, and remember that your support system, therapist, friends, support group, is there to catch you. Self-care is your rebellion against the idea that you should just suck it up for the sake of everyone else. It's a fierce assertion that you matter. It's the fuel that will power your transformation from surviving to thriving. Let's talk about adding those moments of joy to your life. It's time to explore how you can find pleasure, fun, and connect with your inner spark once again. 
Chapter 9, Sex, Dating, and Diving Back In, If You Want It's completely normal to feel a mix of trepidation and excitement about opening yourself back up to romantic connections. This isn't about rushing to replace your ex-spouse, it's about exploring a new chapter of your life on your own terms, when and if you feel ready. Step 1, Are You Really Ready? There's no universal timeline for when to get back out there. Here are some questions to ask yourself. Done grieving, if your ex is still a central focus of your thoughts, or you're yearning for reconciliation, casual dating will likely cause more pain than joy. Emotional stability, dating can stir up old insecurities. Do you feel grounded enough to handle potential rejection and the emotional roller coaster of forming new connections, especially while healing? Desire, not pressure, are you dating because you genuinely want connection or because of external pressure well-meaning friends who want to fix you or societal expectations that single equals incomplete? If the answer to any of the above is no, don't panic. Focus on rebuilding your self-confidence, healing, and simply having fun. Healthy romantic relationships thrive when you're whole on your own. Set your own dating terms. The beauty of dating post-divorce is that you get to write the rules. Think about Casual or committed, are you looking for light-hearted fun or seeking a longer-term partnership? Be upfront with yourself, and potential partners. Your pace, the first coffee date doesn't obligate you to anything. Take your time getting to know people. Trust your gut, you're not beholden to anyone. Boundaries 101 what makes you feel safe, respected, and excited? What are non-negotiables? Get clarity on those before your first date. Navigating online dating For many, online dating is the primary entry point, and it can feel overwhelming. Here's how to make it work for you. Choose your platform carefully, some apps cater to specific demographics, dating goals, or interests. Do some research to find ones that align with what you're looking for. Create an honest, authentic profile, highlight your personality, not just a list of superficial attributes. Humor and self-awareness are appealing. Be intentional with your swipes, don't fall into the endless swiping trap. Focus on profiles that genuinely pique your interest. Trust your intuition, if pre-date communication feels off, don't ignore it. You're allowed to change your mind or cancel a date at any point. Safety first, always. Meet in public places, for the first few dates, opt for well-populated locations you're familiar with. Tell someone your plans, let a trusted friend or family member know where you're going and with who. Keep your guard up, be wary of sharing personal information too soon or anyone who pressures you into something you're not comfortable with. Overcoming fear and rejection. Getting back out there after a divorce can bring up old vulnerabilities. Fear of rejection is natural, but don't let it hold you back. Reframe rejection, it's not a referendum on your worthiness. Often, it simply means you weren't a good fit. Focus on growth mindset, view each date, even the bad ones, as a learning experience and a chance to refine what you're looking for. Celebrate yourself. Don't wait for someone else's validation. Plan dates with yourself a new restaurant, a concert, a solo hike. Fall in love with your own company first. The intimacy question. After a divorce, re-entering the world of physical intimacy can be fraught, even if you're longing for connection. Go at your own pace, and prioritize open communication. Take it slow. Don't feel pressured to be physically intimate before you're emotionally ready. It's okay to change your mind, consent is an ongoing conversation. You can say yes at one stage and withdraw consent later. Always listen to that gut feeling. Your body, your rules, if past experiences with sex within your marriage were negative, focused work with a sex therapist can help you rediscover pleasure and reclaim your body on your own terms. If you desire love again, Absolutely, love after divorce is not only possible, but it can be richer, deeper, and more fulfilling, informed by the hard-won wisdom you've gained. Here's the key. 
Don't look for someone to complete you. Seek a partner who enhances the wonderful, already whole person you are. Dating after divorce is an adventure, with bumpy roads and exhilarating highs. Embrace it as an opportunity for growth, discovery, and above all, having fun. How can we dig deeper into topics like handling awkward first date conversations, sex after a long break, or spotting red flags in potential partners? Chapter 10, Finding Your Tribe, New Friendships After Divorce Divorce often creates a seismic shift in your friendships. Some old friends become your indispensable support system, while others may pull back. It's a painful, but natural part of the process. As you build your new life, intentionally creating a vibrant social circle is essential to your emotional well-being and overall happiness. Who is your tribe? Start by envisioning the ideal qualities of your new friends. Similar interests? Shared values? Do you want a mix of friends from various life stages or specifically women who understand the unique challenges you're facing? Identifying these traits helps narrow your search. Where to find your people? Activities you love, group fitness classes, book clubs, art workshops, volunteer opportunities all are fertile ground for meeting people with shared interests. Start with things you've always wanted to try but haven't gotten around to. Online communities and meetups, explore local meetup groups focused on women's interests, divorce-specific groups, or activities like hiking or board game nights. Online forums and social media offer virtual connection, which can lead to real-life meetups. Branching out with existing friends, let your friends know you're open to expanding your social circle. They might have introductions to make. Be the initiator, don't wait for invites. If you click with someone, suggest grabbing coffee or a walk. Most people crave deeper connections, but are nervous to be the ones to extend the invite. Navigating social situations Walking into a party or event where you don't know many people can be intimidating. Here's how to power through. Small talk starter pack, prepare a few open-ended icebreaker questions, love your necklace, where did you get it? Or first time at this book club. Focus outward, if overwhelmed, find someone who seems equally shy and strike up a conversation. Helping others ease into a situation can take the pressure off yourself. Short and sweet is fine, don't feel obliged to stay at events that drain you. Showing up is a victory in itself, even if you leave a bit early. The divorce question. When, and how? You disclose your divorce is entirely up to you. There's no need to wear it as a scarlet letter. If it feels appropriate, you can casually mention recently separated or going through a big life change. Remember, people are more focused on their own lives than you probably assume. The quality vs. Quantity trap. Don't prioritize sheer number of friends, prioritize the depth of connection. A handful of genuine, Supportive friendships will have far greater impact on your well-being than a wide, yet superficial social network. Dealing with awkwardness. You might encounter mutual friends of your ex. Here's how to navigate it gracefully. Be the bigger person, brief, polite greetings are sufficient. You don't owe anyone explanations or a performance of happiness. Boundaries if needed, if mutual friends make you uncomfortable with questions or constantly bring up your ex, it's okay to set boundaries. I appreciate you caring, but I'm not comfortable discussing my divorce right now. Own your social choices, you're allowed to curate your social circle to prioritize your own emotional well-being. If you need a break from specific gatherings or individuals, give yourself that permission. The Magic of Shared Experience Divorce-specific support groups offer a unique kind of understanding that can be profoundly validating. Consider seeking one out. The shared experiences with other women in similar situations can help you feel less alone and provide practical advice on everything from navigating holidays to dealing with awkward social encounters. Nurturing existing friendships. Show appreciation to the friends who've been there for you through thick and thin. Open communication let them know how much their support means. Be clear on the ways they can best show up for you, 
listening ear, distracting outings, practical help. Reciprocate the effort, as you heal, make sure you are not just a receiver of care, but also a good friend in return. Be patient, some friendships will morph, and that's okay. Allow relationships to evolve organically. Building a new social life mirrors the process of rediscovering yourself, it takes effort, openness to new experiences, and sometimes overcoming the discomfort of those first initial steps. Celebrate every new connection, no matter how small, as stepping stones on your path towards a full, vibrant life. What specific social challenges would you like to address? Let's talk strategies for handling first dates within overlapping social circles, setting boundaries with intrusive friends, or even handling situations where your ex is trying to turn mutual friends against you. Part 4, Lessons and Legacy Chapter 11, Reframing the Narrative, Finding the Gifts in Goodbye Right now, the idea that your divorce could contain anything positive, let alone gifts, might feel ridiculous. It's important to acknowledge that this pain is real, and forcing toxic positivity is unhelpful. However, within this difficult experience lie the seeds of profound growth and resilience. The Journey of Reframing Reframing isn't about pretending the hurt didn't happen or denying your anger, sadness, and disappointment. It's a gradual process of consciously shifting your focus from the wounds to the lessons. Here's how to begin. Acknowledging the pain, write an uncensored letter expressing every negative thought and raw emotion you have about your divorce and the broken marriage. Get it all out. Then, symbolically burn or tear up that letter. This release creates space to explore a different perspective. The choice point, you have a choice. You can let this experience define you negatively, becoming a hardened, jaded version of yourself, or you can choose to let it shape you into someone stronger, wiser, and more deeply aware of what truly matters in life. The subtle shift in language, notice how often you use the words failed marriage, my ex ruined. And start to replace them with more neutral terms like ended marriage or we weren't meant to stay together. Language has power over our inner narrative. Gratitude after hardship. This isn't about being grateful for your divorce, but shifting your focus to identify lessons and unexpected positives that may have emerged. Consider journaling prompts. One hard one skill divorce has taught me is. Because of this experience, I am now clearer about what I truly value. Unexpected positives that have emerged from my divorce include. Even the smallest things count stronger bonds with your children discovering a hidden creative passion, or finally learning how to handle your finances independently. Gratitude rewires your brain to actively look for the good amidst the difficult. Identifying your growth zones. Consider these reflective questions. Answer with honesty and compassion for the woman who was at the beginning of her divorce journey. What are you most proud of in yourself and how you've navigated this challenge? Are there parts of your self-strength, determination? a newfound sense of humor that have surprised you? How has this experience changed your priorities or your perspective on life? Letting go of bitterness. Bitterness is like a poison you drink, hoping your ex will feel the effects. It only harms you. Forgiveness isn't about condoning their actions or a grand reconciliation gesture. It's about releasing the acidic anger that undermines your own peace of mind. Forgiveness as a gift to yourself. Try this exercise, close your eyes, visualize your ex, and say, I'm not forgiving you for your sake, but for mine. I no longer want to give you the power to drag me down. Small steps, start with forgiving smaller transgressions or disappointments. As you see how this act lightens your emotional load, it becomes easier to consider forgiving the more significant hurts. Extracting meaning from pain. Perhaps you gained clarity about the kind of partner you deserve. Or you learned how emotionally resilient you are. Or realized just how loved and supported you are by your friends and family. Even the most painful experiences, when reflected upon with courage, can transform into fuel for greater self-understanding and self-compassion. Sharing your story, when you feel ready, talk to other women going through a divorce. 
sharing your hard-won lessons is not only empowering for you, but offers hope to someone else who may feel desperately alone. Your new why, how will you use this experience to make a difference? Channel the energy towards a cause you're passionate about, volunteer work, or simply becoming a source of support for a friend. This creates a sense of purpose that transcends the personal pain. The ever-evolving narrative. The process of reframing your divorce narrative is ongoing. There might be days when the anger or sadness resurfaces, and that's okay. Allow yourself to feel those emotions, knowing you have the tools to shift your perspective again. The gifts of this painful experience may not be immediately apparent. But trust that by actively choosing growth and seeking out pockets of gratitude, you are setting yourself on a path to emerge not just despite your divorce, but because of it. Let's explore ways to incorporate creative practices to help you further process these powerful lessons art journaling, writing a poem focusing on your strength, or even starting a blog to share your experiences anonymously. Chapter 12, The Thriving Blueprint, Designing Your Best Life if the past few years have been about weathering the storm, this chapter is your sunrise. You've shed the weight of a relationship that didn't serve you, reclaimed your power, and discovered newfound depths of resilience. Now, you get to answer the thrilling question, what do I truly want for myself, without limitations or anyone else's expectations? Vision Board Time Before we get practical, let's dream big. Get crafty grab old magazines, scissors, and a poster board. Create a vision board reflecting how you want your life to look and feel a year from now, five years from now. Include images, quotes, power words anything that ignites excitement and possibility. All facets matter, don't just focus on romance. Think about friendships, career, finances, where you want to live, hobbies you've always dreamt about adventures you crave. Sensual inspiration, don't just focus on visuals, use all your senses. Include a scented candle, a playlist of empowering songs, a cup of your favorite tea create a multisensory experience as you envision your future. Place your vision board somewhere you'll see it daily. Let this tangible reminder of possibility fuel your determination as we translate dreams into action. Goal setting, the smart way. Turning dreams into reality requires a strategic approach. Here's how to set goals that aren't just wishful thinking, but blueprints for achievement. Specific, instead of I want to be happy, try I want to feel truly content with my work life or I want to prioritize joyful friendships. Measurable, what does success look like? Find a new job with better pay and flexibility or join three social clubs to meet new friends with similar interests. Achievable, challenge yourself, but avoid setting unobtainable goals that are destined to leave you feeling defeated. Break down big goals into smaller, manageable steps. Relevant, do the goals align with your values and the life you envisioned on your vision board? Time bound, I will explore new career options in the next three months or I'll have coffee with a new potential friend by the end of the week. Deadlines create a sense of urgency and accountability. Defining a fulfilling career Whether you want a total career change or a revamp of your current job, now's your chance. Take inventory, what are your non-negotiable needs salary, flexibility, passion alignment? What are you naturally good at? What sparks your curiosity? Think outside the 9 to 5 box, could freelance work, consulting, or even starting your own business be a path to more autonomy and fulfillment? Network strategically, reach out to people in fields that interest you. Ask for informational interviews, the goal is to gather insights, not necessarily a job offer. Upskill yourself, continuous learning expands your options. Local workshops, online courses or even a part-time certification program can make you a more attractive candidate. Reclaiming your passions. Somewhere between marriage, maybe raising kids and the whirlwind of adult responsibilities, you might have lost touch with things that once brought you pure joy. Reconnect with those sparks. Consider. Childhood nostalgia, what made your eyes shine as a child? Painting, dancing, 
playing a sport? Find low pressure ways to dabble again. The someday aisle. List, is it time to finally take that cooking class, learn a new language, or train for that 5K? Just for fun, not everything needs a lofty purpose. If binge watching K dramas or tackling intricate puzzles makes you happy, prioritize guilt free enjoyment. Purpose beyond the personal. Finding ways to contribute to something bigger than yourself is a powerful source of fulfillment and connection. Volunteer match, what causes move you? Animal welfare, adult literacy, helping the homeless? Explore opportunities aligned with your passions. Your skills for good, maybe you're a pro at organization. Offer your services to a local nonprofit in need of help streamlining their operations. Start your own thing. Is there an unmet need in your community you feel called to address? Even a small scale initiative can have a ripple effect. The blueprint is a living document. Life isn't linear, and your goals will evolve. Revisit both your vision board and specific goals regularly. Celebrate what you've achieved, and adjust course where needed. Remember, flexibility is as vital as determination. You've already shown incredible strength in navigating an unpredictable life change. Now, channel that power into designing a life filled with purpose, passion, and the deep joy you deserve. What aspect of building your new life fills you with the most excitement, and maybe a bit of fear? Let's dive deeper. Part V, Protecting Your Peace. Chapter 13, Boundary Bootcamp. Think of boundaries as the fences protecting your beautiful, newly cultivated garden of well-being. Clear, healthy boundaries are essential in all facets of your life, especially after a divorce when old dynamics tend to get murky. Why boundaries matter, especially now? Self-preservation, you're rebuilding your life. Strong boundaries ensure you have the time, emotional bandwidth, and resources to focus on your own healing and goals. Minimize conflict, clear boundaries with your ex minimize misunderstandings and arguments, particularly regarding CO parenting or any ongoing financial entanglements. Healthier relationships, boundaries create healthy expectations within your friendships, family dynamics, and potential new romantic relationships. Self-respect. Setting clear boundaries with others is a powerful act of self-respect. It communicates, my needs and well-being matter. Types of boundaries. Physical boundaries, your physical space and your body. For example, asking friends to call before dropping over, or declining hugs if physical touch is uncomfortable. Emotional boundaries, about what you are willing to discuss, the kind of emotional support you need and the type of communication you want with your ex. Text only for kid-related logistics, for example. Time boundaries, saying no to requests that eat away at the time you've set aside for self-care, new hobbies, or simple downtime. Boundaries with your ex, these are non-negotiable. It may include limiting communication to CO parenting necessities, refusing to rehash past relationship issues, or setting clear rules for interactions when exchanging children. Know your boundary hot spots. Where do you feel most pressured or resentful? Common red flags that signal the need for stronger boundaries include Overextending yourself, always saying yes to everyone else's needs, even when it leaves you drained. People pleasing, feeling responsible for everyone else's happiness or avoiding saying no for fear of confrontation. Constant advice givers, friends or family who constantly offer unsolicited advice, often in ways that feel dismissive of your own choices. Energy vampires, people who always seem to turn conversations towards their problems, leaving you feeling emotionally exhausted. Strategies for saying no, without the guilt trip. Keep it simple, you don't need elaborate excuses. That won't work for me or I have a prior commitment are sufficient. Sandwich technique, if appropriate, soften the no with appreciation. Thank you for the invite, but I'm going to pass this time. Offer an alternative, I can't make dinner Saturday, but how about coffee next Wednesday? Repeat as needed, people pleasers often have to reassert their no a few times. Stay firm, but polite. 
Handling Boundary Violations Even with clear boundaries, people will inevitably test them. Here's how to respond. Restate calmly, we agreed on text only for CO parenting communication. Please call only if it's an emergency. Disengage, if the person disrespects repeated requests, cut the conversation short. I'm not going to discuss this right now. You don't owe anyone unlimited access to your time and energy. Consequence time, if you can't respect my need for a 15-minute break before jumping into venting, I'll have to walk away and we can try again later. Boundaries with yourself. We're often our own harshest boundary violators. Address these culprits. Negative self-talk, speak to yourself the way you would a beloved friend. Cultivate a compassionate inner voice. Shoulds and musts, these rigid rules lead to guilt and overwhelm. Replace them with kinder words like choose to or want. Perfectionism, strive for progress, not impossible perfection. Celebrate small wins and be gentle with yourself on off days. When guilt creeps in. Remember, saying no to others is saying yes to yourself. Here's how to defuse the guilt trap. Check the facts. Is your fear of disappointing others based on what they've actually said, or are you filling in the blanks with worst-case scenarios? Temporary vs. Forever, I need to focus on my own well-being right now doesn't mean a permanent rejection. Your needs are valid, you are not selfish for prioritizing your goals, emotional bandwidth, and basic need for rest and self-care. Boundary Boot Camp is ongoing. As you become more confident in saying no, you'll spot more areas of life where you can create healthier boundaries. Celebrate that evolution. Think of protecting your boundaries as a form of self-care, essential for building the thriving, joyful life you deserve. What specific boundary challenges would you like to tackle? Let's drill down further, whether it's handling a pushy ex, guilt-tripping family members, or managing work-related boundaries as you adjust to this new chapter of your life. Chapter 14, Social Media Survival Tactics Social media can feel like an extension of your divorce playing out in public. Seeing your ex's seemingly happy updates, dealing with potentially awkward mutual friend situations, and the temptation to obsessively self-compare can derail your healing journey. It's time to take charge of your digital well-being. The Immediate Post-Breakup Social Media Purge Unfollow your ex don't just unfriend, outright unfollow, or if necessary, even temporarily block them. Cutting off that visual feed prevents the sting of seeing them with new partners or on happy vacations. Resist the sleuthing, your mental health will thank you. Deactivate your ex's friends if the urge to check their pages is overwhelming. Consider a temporary break, if social media feels saturated with reminders of your past relationship. Taking a complete hiatus can be rejuvenating. Tell your close circle you're taking a break, so they don't worry. Managing mutual friends. This is where things get tricky. Here are your options. Unfollow without ill will, if seeing updates about mutual friends stirs up negative emotions, a temporary unfollow is perfectly acceptable self-care. You can always re-follow them later. The mute button. Most platforms have a mute option. You won't see their posts, but remain friends thus avoiding any social awkwardness. Selective sharing, with closer friends you trust, be honest, it's hard for me to see updates about my ex right now. Would you mind not tagging me in any photos where they're present? The question of publicly announcing your divorce. There are no rules. Do what feels right for you. The clean break. A brief, dignified announcement, I want to let you know that X's name and I have separated. Can prevent concerned inquiries and quell gossip. The private approach, individually message close friends and family, while avoiding a public posting. The I don't do social media drama option, simply ignore the topic online. Your life, your terms. Protecting your privacy. Now's a good time to do a social media security audit. Review settings, limit who can see your posts, tag you in photos, and find your profile. Make your past posts visible to friends only. 
Location, 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 do you really need to geotag every coffee shop and yoga class? Disable location tagging for increased privacy. They Google yourself test, see what comes up for your name. Request removal of old photos or out-of-date information that you don't want easily found. Social media as self-promotion, why not? As you heal, you can reclaim social media as a tool that supports your growth, not hinders it. Positive inspo, follow accounts focused on healing, female empowerment, pursuing new passions. Curating your feed shifts your mindset. Your thriving highlight reel. Focus on documenting your wins your cozy new apartment, that painting you finally finished, a hiking selfie showcasing your radiant smile. Connection on your terms, explore online groups for divorced women, or interest-based groups, hiking, book clubs, as sources of community and new friendships. When social media gets toxic. If negativity, comparing yourself to others, or endless doom scrolling leaves you feeling depleted, be strict. App time limits, many phones have built-in features. Set limits on social media apps and stick to them. Notifications off, turn off all notifications except direct messages from close friends to avoid being constantly sucked back in. Targeted digital cleanse, commit to a 24-hour, even a weekend-long break to reset your relationship with social media. The offline reminder. Connections made face-to-face -face will always trump online interactions. Use social media as a tool, not a substitute for real-life friendships and experiences. Think of this chapter as permission to create a digital space that fosters healing and supports the amazing woman you're becoming. Are there specific social media challenges you're facing? Let's find solutions whether it's handling nosy questions from acquaintances, untagging yourself from old photos, or even using these platforms strategically to explore new dating options when you're ready. Chapter 15, Taming the Inner Critic Your inner critic has a knack for seizing upon your divorce as proof of its favorite narratives, you're not good enough, you'll always be alone, you're incapable of making good choices. These thoughts are not the truth, but distortions that, left unchallenged, hinder your well-being, your joy, and your ability to build a fulfilling new life. Identifying your critic's voice. To combat this enemy, you must first recognize it. Thought journaling, spend a few minutes jotting down the negative thoughts that loop in your head, especially during vulnerable moments. Triggers, notice situations that amplify the critic. Is it social media comparisons, family gatherings, or those lonely late night hours? Whose voice is it really? Often, our inner critic echoes criticisms we heard in childhood from parents, teachers, or past partners. Thought Challenging Techniques Once you recognize the negative thought patterns, fight back with these tools. Is it true? Examine the thought with the scrutiny of a courtroom lawyer. Does one failed relationship mean you're incapable of love? Where's the evidence? Reframing, consciously turn negatives into neutrals or even positives. Replace I'm a failure with my marriage didn't work out, and that's painful, or even, that relationship taught me what I don't want. The so what? Technique, play the thought all the way through. I'm worried I'll never find love again. So what? Does that mean your life is devoid of meaning? Could it be an exciting chance for self-discovery, and ultimately, finding deeper self-love? Cultivating self-compassion. Your inner critic thrives on shame. Self-compassion is its antidote. Practice these shifts. Talk to yourself like a friend, would you berate a friend going through a divorce, or would you offer kindness and support? Give yourself the same. The good enough revolution, perfectionism is a trap. Strive for progress, acknowledge your efforts, and embrace being perfectly, beautifully human. Celebrate your strengths. Each day, find one thing to praise about yourself your resilience, a kind act you did, even mastering a new recipe. Focus grows what you focus on. Embracing imperfection. Here are ways to make peace with not having it all figured out, especially post-divorce. 
The mantra of right now, instead of condemning yourself for not being further along, ground yourself in the present, right now, I'm doing my best, and that's enough. Vulnerability as strength, share your struggles with a trusted friend. You'll likely discover they grapple with their own inner critic, fostering a sense of connection and normalizing imperfection. Humor as healer, the ability to laugh at your own fumbles and stumbles along the way diffuses shame and builds resilience. Building your inner cheerleader. Here's how to make this self-compassionate approach a habit. Affirmation note cards, write down positive affirmations based on your reframed thoughts. Place them by your mirror, in your wallet, somewhere visible. Repetition is key. Compassionate body scan, if you find harsh self-criticisms focused on your appearance, counter it with this practice, close your eyes, and slowly scan your body. Appreciate all it does for you, send kindness to the parts you struggle to love. Good things jar, each night, write down one positive thing about your day, no matter how small. On down days, revisit the jar as a reminder that good exists, even during tough times. When the critic is overpowering. If negative self-talk feels relentless, reaching out for professional support is a sign of strength. Therapists specializing in cognitive behavioral techniques or self-compassion therapies can give you powerful tools to transform your inner dialogue. Remember, your thoughts are not facts. They are habits that can be changed. Each time you challenge the critic, you weaken its hold over you and water the seeds of self-belief. This inner work is as crucial as any practical or logistical aspect of rebuilding your life. Part 6, The Family Dynamics Chapter 16, When Explaining is Essential, Talking to Your Kids About Divorce There is no single perfect script. Age, developmental stage, and your child's personality all factor into how you approach this conversation. Yet, some core principles apply. Honesty, tailored to their age. Avoid vague euphemisms like mommy and daddy need space. Kids are smart, they'll sense something is off leading to more anxiety. Key points to convey. Simple explanations, we're not going to live together as a family anymore, or sometimes grown UPS who love each other realize they're happier living apart. It's not their fault, children internalize blame for parents' problems. Emphasize this repeatedly, this is a grown-up decision and has nothing to do with you. Reassurance of love, we both love you very much and that will never change. Presenting a united front. Ideally, have this conversation together with your ex, showing kids that even with major changes, you can still see a parent with civility. If this isn't possible, coordinate messaging, so you're giving consistent information. Age-specific approaches. Toddlers slash preschoolers, focus on practical changes. Mommy will live in a new house but you'll have two cozy bedrooms. Keep it brief, they may need repeated, simple reassurances as they process. Elementary age, they can understand more complex emotions. Allow them to express sadness, anger, worry. Reiterate your love, but avoid making promises you can't guarantee, we'll still do holidays together. Teenagers, be direct, prepared for blunt questions. Avoid bad-mouthing your ex which backfires, making them feel like they have to pick sides. Focus on CO parenting, we're working out a plan so you'll see both of us regularly. Anticipate their worries. Kids' fears are often practical about how their daily lives will be disrupted. Address these head-on. Logistics, you'll still go to the same school and see your friends. Give as many specifics about the new living arrangement and schedules as possible. Fear of abandonment, reassure them, even though we won't all live in the same house, you will always have two parents who love you. Financial worries, older children especially may overhear adult conversations. We're working things out, but you don't need to worry about grown-up problems. Expect a range of reactions. There's no right way to react. Some kids withdraw, others act out in anger. Be patient, understanding these are expressions of their pain and confusion, not a rejection of you. 
when to get professional help. If your child exhibits significant changes in sleep, eating, extreme clinginess or aggression lasting beyond a few weeks, reach out to their pediatrician or a child therapist specializing in divorce. Ongoing Conversations The initial talk is just the beginning. Keep the lines of communication open. Check-ins, you seemed quiet today. Is there something about the divorce you want to talk about? Normalizing their feelings, it's okay if sometimes you feel angry about this. Those feelings are normal. Answer questions as they come, kids process in layers. Be patient with repeated questions, offering simple answers each time. Resources to help. Don't go it alone. Utilize the plethora of resources available. Books, age-appropriate children's books about divorce help kids see they're not alone and normalize their feelings. Ask your local librarian for recommendations. Online resources, websites like https slash slash kidshealth.org slash offer age specific guides and advice on handling challenging questions. Support groups, for both parents and children of divorce. Connecting with others navigating similar situations reduces the sense of isolation. Protecting their well-being. Don't weaponize, resist the urge to make your child a confidant, sharing negative details about your ex. They need the space to love both parents without guilt. Boundaries around conflict, if you can't discuss things with your ex without fighting, do so through email, or with legal mediation, not in front of your kids. It takes time, kids don't bounce back instantly. Be extra patient, consistent with affection, and model healthy coping with your own sadness. This is a heartbreaking process for everyone involved. Remember, while you cannot shield your children from the pain of divorce, you can shield them from parental conflict and offer a safe space for their emotions. By ensuring the focus remains on their well-being, you guide them through this storm and ultimately show them that love endures even as families change shape. Chapter 17, Navigating Evolving Family Relationships Your divorce can trigger a range of reactions from your extended family, unwavering support, confusing judgment or even attempts to take sides. It's important to remember, their reactions are often rooted in their own fears, insecurities or limited understanding of your situation. Your Parents your parents may experience their own sense of grief. They envisioned a happy marriage for their child, and your divorce marks a loss for them as well. Here's how to navigate the complexity. Be patient with shock, let the initial dust settle. Once the raw shock subsides, they're more likely to hear your perspective. What you need, be upfront about the type of support that's helpful listening without advice, practical help respecting your need for space if that's the case. Boundaries around your ex, I appreciate your love for ex's name, but I'm not ready to hear updates about them right now. Your in-laws. This is where things get particularly thorny. The level of awkwardness depends on the pre-existing relationship, and whether your ex continues to have contact with them. The clean break, if your relationship with your in-laws was mainly due to your marriage, a clean break may be the healthiest choice. Continued connection, if you had genuinely close bonds with your in-laws, be honest with those individuals, I hope we can maintain a relationship independent of ex's name, but I understand if that's too complicated right now. The Grey Rock Method, if you suspect bad-mouthing to your ex or attempts to get information from you, become as interesting as a Grey Rock brief, neutral responses, limited engagement. Extended family, the busybodies and judgy ants. Unfortunately, divorce often brings out intrusive questions or ill-conceived attempts at playing peacemaker. Selective sharing, you control the narrative. With well-meaning but nosy relatives, a vague we weren't right for each other is enough. Shutting down gossip, I really don't want to get into the details of my divorce. Let's shift the subject to something more cheerful. How is topic change? Humor as deflector, with repeat offenders, a slightly absurd response, did you know I'm training to join the circus? Can throw them off. Limited engagement, if certain family gatherings become emotionally draining, 
it's perfectly fine to politely decline invitations for a while. When they choose his side. Sadly, this happens. Remember, loyalty to your ex often stems from their own discomfort, not an accurate assessment of the situation. Focus on your circle, cling tightly to the family members who offer unconditional support. Their love matters most. Don't retaliate, taking the high road may feel unsatisfying, but trying to force people to pick sides only intensifies the drama. Time can heal, leave the door open for future reconciliation. Should someone try to reconnect down the line, address any lingering hurt, but avoid rehashing the divorce itself. New Partners and Blended Families If and when new partners are introduced on both sides, it gets even more complex. Take things slow, with children's well-being always paramount. Your partner and your family, set expectations with your family and with your partner. Don't pressure anyone into artificial closeness before they're ready. Openness with your ex, when the time is right, a heads up directly to your ex about a new partner before introductions to the kids minimizes shock and potential conflict. United front when possible, if both you and your ex have new partners, communicating respectfully about expectations around the kids benefits everyone. Protecting your peace. Your emotional well-being is paramount. Here's permission to Opt out, decline events if you know they'll be difficult. Family is important, but I'm taking some time for myself right now. Set time limits, I can pop into the party for an hour, but then I have another commitment. This eases the pressure of staying. Bring a buddy, if facing gatherings alone feels intimidating, ask a supportive friend to accompany you as a buffer. The divorce dust will eventually settle, and family relationships will find a new equilibrium. It won't look the same as before, and that's okay. Prioritize the relationships that fill you with love and support, and create healthy boundaries around those that don't. Chapter 18, The Holidays Minefield the first holiday season after a divorce is often the hardest. Old traditions suddenly feel laden with grief and the disparity between curated social media images of perfect families and your altered reality can be especially painful. Acknowledging that pain is important, while also actively choosing to create a new kind of holiday magic. The shared custody factor. If you have children, navigating holidays adds a layer of stress and requires coordination with your ex. Here's how to prioritize your kids' emotional well-being. Early planning, discuss a holiday schedule well in advance to minimize last-minute conflict spoiling the mood for everyone. Alternating years, if certain holidays are especially important to both of you, consider alternating years for who gets the kids on the actual day. Flexibility is key, be open to celebrating on a different date. A Christmas Eve on December 22nd with your kids can be just as special. New traditions matter, focus on the time you do have with your children. Create new, unique traditions they'll associate with your parent-child bond. Remagining traditions. Old traditions may need a revamp, while room opens up for exciting new ones. Here's how to approach it. Pick and choose, do some traditions still bring joy? Keep those. The elaborate Christmas baking marathon might not feel as festive solo but opening one stocking on Christmas Eve might hit a sweet spot. Just for me rituals, create small traditions that are just for you a special bath with fancy candles, a solo walk to look at holiday lights, ordering your favorite takeout and watching a cheesy holiday movie. Celebrate with friends, friends giving and alternative holiday gatherings are an amazing source of connection. Lean on your chosen family. The getaway option if your usual holiday feels too emotionally charged, a change of scenery can be rejuvenating. Book that solo spa weekend or visit relatives in a different city. Handling emotional triggers. There will be moments when sadness or loneliness washes over you. Have a plan to ride those emotional waves. Mindful permission, allow yourself to feel the feelings it's okay to miss how things used to be for a little while. Then, consciously shift your focus. Safe space to vent, appoint one trusted friend or family member you can call when you need to let it all out. But set a time limit 10 minutes of venting, then moving on. 
Distraction Arsenal, Have That Comfort Movie, Favorite Upbeat Album, or A Walk Planned. Actively shift your mood and environment when the sadness starts to pull you under. Rituals of Release, Write a letter to the ghost of Christmas past, expressing your pain and anger, then symbolically burn it. Giving Back, The Antidote to Self-Absorption. Focusing outside yourself can be a powerful way to navigate loneliness or sadness during the holidays. Volunteer your time, soup kitchens, animal shelters, various organizations serving the less fortunate always need extra hands during the holiday season. Small act, big impact, adopt a family in need, buy gifts for a toy drive, or even pay for the coffee of the person behind you. Anonymous generosity boosts your spirits guaranteed. Spread the cheer, organize a holiday caroling group for your building, send cards to old friends. This shifts your focus to creating joy for others. Managing encounters with your ex. If you have shared custody, brief encounters at kid-related holiday events are likely unavoidable. Minimize awkwardness with. Treat it like a business exchange, polite, neutral, focused on the immediate task at hand getting your child their present from grandma. The buffer zone, bring supportive friends or family along to holiday events if possible. Their presence helps maintain an emotional safe space for you. Strategic exits, don't linger longer than necessary. Once your kid is occupied with cousins or a new toy, slip out, guilt-free. A note on social media. The highly curate holiday highlight reel on social media is especially toxic post-divorce. Take a temporary hiatus, unfollow accounts that stir up sadness or not enough feelings, and instead fill your feed with sources of inspiration and laughter. The holidays won't magically revert to their pre-divorce form. But they can become a time of self-discovery, new traditions, and deepening bonds with those who truly cherish you. What are some new holiday rituals or activities you'd like to explore? Let's brainstorm ideas from a cozy cabin getaway weekend to starting a worst holiday gift exchange tradition with friends. Part 7, Owning Your Future Chapter 19, Career Comeback, or Reinvention Divorce often brings financial strain, adding to an already emotionally heavy situation. But, it can also be a catalyst for re-evaluating your relationship with work and uncovering untapped potential. Step 1, Self-Assessment, Beyond the Resume The Values Audit, What Truly Matters to You in a Job Flexibility, Intellectual Challenge, A Creative Environment, A Sense of Making a Difference Identifying these non-negotiables prevents chasing jobs solely for the paycheck. Skills Inventory Look beyond your job titles. What soft skills have you developed leadership, organization, adaptability from navigating a chaotic household? Highlight those on your resume. Dream a little, then get practical if money and time were no object, what would your ideal work life look like? Now, are there elements of that you could realistically incorporate into a new job, even on a smaller scale? Scenarios and Strategies 1. The re-entry, if you took a career break to raise children or care for a family member, here's how to address it confidently. Reframe the gap, emphasize skills honed during this time project management, think kids' birthday parties, crisis management, ever calmed a tantrum throwing toddler, and expert level multitasking. Returnships, many companies have programs specifically geared towards bringing experienced professionals back into the workforce. Research options in your field. Embrace upskilling, a short online course or certification can quickly bridge any technology gaps and boost your confidence. To the bored and miserable club if your current job leaves you uninspired, first get specific. Tweak or total overhaul, are small changes possible, new responsibilities within your current role, advocating for a lateral move to a different department, or is a complete change needed? Test the waters, can you shadow someone in a field that interests you? Utilize informational interviews for insider insights before making the leap. The side hustle as stepping stone, can you start exploring a passion project on evenings or weekends? This allows you to build skills and gain real-world experience, 
even if it starts small. 3. The I have no idea camp If you are truly starting from scratch, career counseling can be invaluable for those deeper what do I truly want. Questions Practical tools for your toolkit Your elevator pitch, a concise, compelling 30-second summary of your background and what you are looking for next. Practice it until it feels natural. Revamped Resume and LinkedIn, don't just list tasks, quantify achievements, managed a budget of X dollars, boosted sales by X percent. There are countless free resources online to help with formatting. Harness the hidden network, let friends, former colleagues, neighbors know your job hunting. You never know who might have a lead. Embracing the squiggly path. Linear career trajectories are a myth. Post-divorce especially, be open to the unexpected. Tempying or contract work, a great way to try out different fields, build your network, and can sometimes lead to full-time positions. Nonprofits need your skills, maybe salary isn't the priority right now. Meaningful work with a mission-driven organization can be incredibly fulfilling during this life transition. Entrepreneur may be closer than you think. Turn a passion for crafting into an ETSE shop, offer your killer organization skills as a virtual assistant, teach an online course in your area of expertise. The emotional side of the job hunt. Rejection stings, especially when you're feeling vulnerable. Here's how to stay resilient. It's not personal, usually most non-hires are due to factors outside your control. Don't let it derail your confidence. Celebrate the small wins, treat yourself for each interview, each well-drafted cover letter. Progress, not perfection. Your support squad, lean on friends who will cheerlead, distract you with bad movie nights when needed, and remind you of your awesomeness. This chapter is about igniting a sense of possibility. Yes, there's uncertainty, but instead of letting that fear paralyze you, let it fuel your determination to create a work life that feels expansive, aligned with your values, and lights you up. What kind of work environments or job responsibilities spark genuine excitement for you? Let's get specific and explore pathways, both practical and outside the box, to turn those sparks into a fulfilling reality. Chapter 20, Owning Your Financial Powerhouse Divorce can be a financial wake-up call. You might be taking charge of your finances for the first time, rebuilding from setbacks, or aiming for a level of financial independence that wasn't emphasized in your marriage. Knowledge is your superpower, so let's break it down. Step 1, Your Financial Snapshot No sugarcoating here, get brutally honest about your current situation. Net worth, create a simple spreadsheet. List assets, savings retirement accounts, home equity if applicable, and debts, credit cards, student loans, outstanding balances on car, etc. Subtract total debt from total assets that's your starting point. The income slash expense breakdown, track every dollar for at least a month. This isn't about judgment, but awareness. Those sneaky little daily expenses add up. Post-divorce settlement, do you receive alimony or child support? Factor these into your budget, but build a long-term plan that prioritizes your own earning power, as situations can change. Demystifying budgeting basics Too many women equate budgeting with deprivation. Think of it instead as a powerful tool for aligning your spending with your priorities. Needs vs. Wants, non-negotiable expenses, housing, food, child care, etc., then the wants, entertainment, travel, hobbies. This is where conscious choices get made. Budgeting apps and tools, many free options help you track spending and spot areas where you can cut back. Find one you enjoy using for consistency. Celebrate the wins, hit your savings goal for the month. Have some fun money allocated, guilt-free, for that special purchase or experience. Tackling debt strategically. If you're carrying debt, there are good and bad strategies for tackling it. Avalanche vs. Snowball, Avalanche method prioritizes paying off the account with the highest interest rate first, 
mathematically optimal, while Snowball focuses on paying off the smallest balance first, psychological boost. Choose the method that keeps you motivated. Negotiate interest rates, call your credit card companies, explain your situation. Often they'll lower the rate, even temporarily, making those payments less overwhelming. Don't let shame spiral, if debt feels insurmountable, seek non-profit credit counseling, often free. Having a plan eases anxiety. Investing 101. Building wealth means making your money work for you. Here's the beginner breakdown. Compound interest is your bestie, even small amounts invested consistently over time grow exponentially. Online calculators show the magic of this concept. Retirement accounts, max out your contributions to IRA accounts, traditional or Roth, depending on your tax situation, and any employer-sponsored 401k plans, especially if there's a company match. Free money. Index funds, a simple, diversified way to invest in the overall stock market without having to pick individual stocks. Robo-advisors, if even this feels intimidating, start small with apps like Acorns that invest your spare change into preset portfolios based on your risk tolerance. Women-specific financial challenges. Let's address the elephant in the room. Women, on average, earn less than men, take more career breaks for caregiving, and live longer. This creates unique hurdles. The confidence gap, studies show women are less likely to invest, and often too conservative when they do. Combat this by educating yourself. Advocate fiercely, don't hesitate to ask for that raise, negotiate the job offer or compare fees charged by different financial advisors. The long view, plan not just for retirement, but for potential long-term care needs. It's an uncomfortable topic, but proactive planning brings peace of mind. Resources to empower you. You don't need a finance degree to become your own savvy CFO. Utilize these resources. Financial websites geared to women, sites like Elvest, https slash slash www.lvest.com slash worthy https slash slash www.worthy.com slash and the financial diet https slash slash www.thefinancialdiet.com slash offer accessible explainers and tools podcasts for every level from beginner basics to advanced investing strategies there's a podcast to match your current knowledge and goals Seek fee-only advice, if you have significant assets or a complex financial situation, consider a fee-only financial planner, not one who works on commission. This chapter isn't about getting rich quick, it's about ditching fear or overwhelm around money and building a secure future based on informed choices. What's your biggest financial fear or point of confusion? Let's break it down and replace that fear with a step-by-step -step action plan. Chapter 21 Guarding your heart, protecting yourself from future hurt. Your divorce was painful, but it doesn't have to become a self-fulfilling prophecy of future heartbreak. Let's turn this experience into a catalyst for recognizing unhealthy relationship patterns and consciously choosing the fulfilling love you deserve. Step 1. Understanding your past. It's not about blaming yourself or reopening deep wounds, but identifying patterns with clear eyes consider. Echoes of the familiar, were there dynamics in your marriage that mirrored those from childhood or past relationships? We often unconsciously seek out familiar patterns, even if those patterns are negative. The rescuer role, are you drawn to people you feel the need to fix, to the detriment of your own well-being? This often stems from a lack of healthy boundaries. Filling the void, did you rush into a relationship before truly healing from your divorce, seeking validation or distraction from pain, rather than building a genuine connection? Attachment Styles, Your Relationship Blueprint Attachment theory offers a powerful lens for understanding how your early bonds with caregivers shape your relationship dynamics as an adult. Here's the basic breakdown. Secure attachment, you feel safe, trusting and comfortable with both intimacy and independence. Anxious attachment, often rooted in inconsistent childhood experiences, 
this leads to neediness, fear of abandonment, or constantly seeking external validation. Avoidant attachment, difficulty with emotional intimacy, withdrawing when things get serious, confusing independence with self-sufficiency. Disorganized attachment, often stemming from childhood trauma, characterized by both craving closeness and fearing it at the same time. Identifying red flags. The goal isn't to become hypervigilant, but to spot early signs your needs aren't being met. Watch out for Love bombing, excessively flattering attention and premature declarations of love. Healthy relationships progress at a natural pace. Inconsistent communication, goes from hot and heavy to disappearing for days. This creates anxiety and undermines trust. Lack of empathy, minimizes your feelings makes everything about them, unable to truly celebrate your wins or offer support when you're down. Controlling tendencies, subtly or overtly trying to dictate your choices, friendships, or isolating you from your support system. Breaking the cycle. This awareness is your greatest tool. Here's how to use it to break free from those old, unhealthy patterns. Take an intentional pause, don't rush into dating. Enjoy your own company and rebuild trust in your own judgment. Challenge the need for a partner, society often bombards divorced women with the message that solo equals incomplete. Repeat this mantra, I am whole, a relationship is an addition, not a completion. Seek therapy, if needed, especially if you recognize deeply ingrained patterns or attachment styles stemming from childhood experiences. Professional support helps you rewire those unconscious blueprints. Building healthy foundations. When you do meet someone new who sparks potential, focus on creating a different dynamic from the ground up. Honesty and vulnerability early on, don't be afraid to share your past relationship hurts, without dwelling on them. This gives you the chance to see if the other person responds with empathy and openness. Articulate your needs, direct. Clear communication builds trust I need consistency in communication, or I thrive on quality time. Own your pacing, don't let excitement propel you into abandoning your needs to please them. It's okay to say, I'm enjoying getting to know you, but I like to take things slow. Watch actions, not just words, anyone can make grand declarations, observe if their behavior consistently aligns with stated values. Trust your gut. That nagging feeling, the little voice saying something is slightly off, listen to it. Women are conditioned to override our intuition in order to be nice or avoid conflict. But those early warning signals are there for a reason. This chapter isn't about building walls around your heart, but about being discerning with who you allow inside. You've learned the hard way what healthy love is not. Now. Let's use that knowledge as a springboard to claim the joyful, supportive, and deeply fulfilling love that you so absolutely deserve. Do you recognize any unhealthy patterns in your past relationships? Want to workshop specific red flags that make you uneasy? Let's break it down. Part 8, The Phoenix Rising Chapter 22, Forgiveness, For Yourself and Others Forgiveness doesn't come with a step-by-step -step manual. It's messy, nonlinear, and deeply personal. But, research consistently shows its profound link to emotional well-being, reduced stress, and even physical health. Misconceptions about forgiveness. It doesn't mean forgetting, forgiveness is about releasing your toxic anger towards the past, not pretending it didn't happen. You can forgive, and still choose to have zero contact with someone. It doesn't erase consequences. Forgiveness can coexist with boundaries, legal action if warranted, or simply the earned wisdom to avoid similar people in the future. It's not about them, primarily, forgiveness is one of the ultimate acts of self-care releasing the energy that resentment takes up frees it for more joy, peace, and focused forward movement. Who deserves forgiveness? Let's be absolutely clear, forgiveness is never mandatory especially in situations of abuse or severe betrayals of trust. If the idea of forgiving your ex feels re-traumatizing, respect that. There's healing to be found in acceptance, in channeling that anger for empowering change, and in building a life where those wounds no longer define you. However, 
if the idea of forgiveness holds even a glimmer of potential freedom, let's explore it. Forgiving others, this could be your ex-partner for their part in hurting you, family members who didn't offer the support you longed for, or even friends who disappointed you during your divorce. Forgiving yourself, often the hardest kind of forgiveness. We berate ourselves for past choices, for not seeing the red flags, for holding out hope too long. The path to self-compassion begins here. Techniques for fostering forgiveness. There's no single right way. Experiment and see what resonates. The empty chair exercise, visualize the person you wish to forgive. Say what you need to say, out loud anger, hurt, all the messy truth. Then, if possible, imagine a response offering their perspective, even an apology. It's about giving yourself closure. Focused writing, journaling in a stream of consciousness style about your anger gets it out of you. Shift away from rumination towards focusing on what you've learned and how you want to be different going forward. Reframing the story, look for the, admittedly hard one, gifts in the pain. Did it make you more resilient? Clarify what truly matters in your life? Without minimizing the hurt, this shift offers a tiny seed of gratitude. Ritual release, write those angry words, then burn or symbolically tear them up. Or, release a balloon for each person you forgive, visualizing your resentment floating away. When forgiveness feels impossible. For deep betrayals, forgiveness may always remain out of reach. Here's how to reframe your healing. Acceptance over forgiveness, accept the pain was real it impacted you, and you will not let it dictate your future. Focus on the release, consciously release your resentment towards them, not for their sake, but so you stop investing precious energy in bitterness. Compassion as the ultimate flex, not forced compassion, but recognizing even those who deeply hurt us are operating from their own pain and limitations. This helps you detach, without needing to understand or fix them. Self-compassion as the foundation. Forgiveness towards others is infinitely easier when you start with yourself. Examine where you might hold lingering self-blame for. Staying too long, you made decisions based on the information you had at the time. Offer now you kindness for wanting love, stability, or doing what you believed was best for your family then. Negative self-talk, replace I'm naive with I learned what unhealthy love looks like or I'm a failure with I'm rebuilding a life on my own terms. What if, colon those spirals about what you could have done differently are mental traps. Redirect that energy towards creating a right now you're proud of. Forgiveness is a journey, not a destination. Certain days, anger might resurface that's okay. Gently return to your chosen forgiveness practices. Think of building a muscle. Each repetition makes you stronger less burdened, and opens your heart to receive the joy and love that is your birthright. Chapter 23, Leaving a Powerful Legacy Divorce can sometimes feel like a very isolating experience. But the truth is, countless women walk this path. By sharing your story, offering support, or advocating for change, you tap into a powerful sense of purpose that transcends your personal pain. The Transformative Power of Storytelling your voice matters. Whether it's an intimate conversation with a friend newly facing divorce, or a wider platform, sharing your story authentically breaks down shame and offers hope. Ways to share your story. Start a blog or social media account, anonymity is fine if vulnerability feels too raw. Focus on lessons learned, practical tips, or simply offering a virtual shoulder to lean on. Reach out to support groups. See if existing divorce support groups invite guest speakers to share their journeys. Write your way to healing, even if it never gets published, writing your story with uncensored honesty allows you to process complex emotions and reclaim your own narrative. The one-on-one -on -one impact, simply letting a friend who's newly divorced know I understand how you feel, let's talk, can be a lifeline. Finding your advocacy niche. What aspect of divorce ignites your desire for change? It could be Helping kids cope, volunteering as a mentor with organizations like Big Brothers Big Sisters, 
especially those focusing on children from single-parent homes. Legal Reform If your divorce exposed unjust laws or biases within the family court system, get involved in advocacy groups working for change. Financial Education for Women Partner with local women's centers or non-profits to lead workshops on post-divorce financial planning or rebuilding credit. Combating Stigma Challenge outdated narratives about being a single woman in your community. Speak about your experiences openly, normalize the ups and downs, and advocate for events and spaces that are inclusive of those navigating life transitions. When helping others feels too raw. If you're still in the thick of your own healing, focus on behind-the-scenes support. Donate to meaningful causes, supporting organizations doing important work on behalf of divorced women or children experiencing family breakups. Share resources. Create a curated list of helpful websites, books, therapists specializing in divorce recovery, and share with those who might need it. Amplify existing voices, follow and share content on social media from other women using their experiences to create positive change. Every like and repost matters. Turning pain into purpose. Here's a powerful mindset shift, you didn't endure all of this for nothing. Consider. What you didn't know then, what practical knowledge or emotional tool do you have now that you wish someone had told you at the start of your divorce? That's your starting point to help others. Filling a need, notice where support is lacking in your community. Could you help start a divorce support group with a specific niche, CO parenting with a difficult ex, rebuilding social life from scratch? Start small, growth is organic, even volunteering a few hours a month or leading one workshop, contributes to a ripple effect larger than yourself. Legacy as a state of mind. Living with a sense of purpose isn't just about grand gestures, it's how you show up to each day. Compassionate mentor, be the person you needed during your darkest days. That could be the newly divorced mom at your kid's school, or a younger colleague struggling in her marriage. Speak your truth. Challenge harmful stereotypes about divorce, broken families, or women restarting their lives. Own your story with strength and resilience. Lifelong learner, the growth sparked by your divorce doesn't have to end. Stay open to new experiences, and model for those around you that starting over can be a catalyst for continuous expansion and self-discovery. You may not set out to change the world, but by bravely speaking up, offering a hand up, or simply showing the world that divorce doesn't break you, you become a beacon of possibility for someone else. And that's a legacy more powerful than you can possibly know. Part 9, Special Circumstances Chapter 24, The Grey Divorce, Considerations for Women Ending Long-Term Marriages The increasing rate of divorce amongst older couples points to a shift, women are no longer willing to settle for unhappiness, even after decades of marriage. This decision, while empowering, comes with a unique set of challenges. Financial fallout. Finances are often a significant source of anxiety in gray divorce. Retirement uncertainty, assets accumulated over a lifetime now need to be divided. This can impact a projected retirement age, planned living standards, and long-term financial security. Earning potential disparity. If your career took a backseat to prioritizing raising children or supporting your spouse's career advancement, your current earning power may be lowered, making rebuilding financial independence seem daunting. Untangling the web, decades of joint accounts, investment properties, retirement funds, and potential inheritances to consider make the financial picture incredibly complex. Emotional Impact on Adult Children while adult children are likely more equipped to handle divorce than young ones, this doesn't eliminate the complex emotions for everyone involved. Shock and disbelief, their foundation image of family is irrevocably altered, even if they logically understand your unhappiness. Conflicted loyalties, avoid the urge to vent excessively about your ex with adult children. They may harbor their own hurt and resentments, and shouldering your emotional burden isn't their role. Guilt tripping. Prepare for comments driven by their own fears what will people say. Or even think of the grandkids. Hold firm to your boundaries. Social network upheaval. 
long-term marriages often mean established couples' friendships. Divorce shakes this up. Taking sides, some friendships may dissolve, sadly becoming casualties of the divorce. Accept this, rather than desperately trying to preserve connections that no longer feel authentic. Single at social events, once comfortable as part of a couple, events might trigger anxiety. Take it slow, bring a supportive friend as a buffer initially if needed. The new dating landscape, if it's been decades since you've dated, it can feel disorientating. Focus on getting to know yourself first. Dating can wait until you're grounded in your new, independent identity. Strategies for navigating a gray divorce. Find the right professionals, seek a divorce lawyer specializing in complex asset divisions. A financial advisor familiar with retirement planning projections for women is crucial. Don't be rushed, avoid making major financial decisions out of fear or pressure while still emotionally raw. If possible, a temporary separation with a legal agreement in place allows for clearer long-term thinking. Therapy for support, talking to a neutral therapist helps you process the overwhelming emotions and protects your adult children from having to be your sole confidant. Communicating with adult children, a simple, united front statement with your ex, we've grown apart and have decided to divorce, is best. Avoid bad-mouthing, focus on asking for their understanding. Recreating your sense of self. Perhaps the most daunting, yet most exhilarating aspect is carving out who you are now. Rediscover old passions, what did you love before life got absorbed by marriage and family? Rekindle that artistic side, travel dream, or lost hobby. The self-care upgrade, invest the time and resources previously poured primarily into family well-being back onto yourself upgrading your health routine, therapy, finally fixing that thing in your house that's been bothering you for years. New community, seek meet UPS for your interests, volunteer for causes you're passionate about. These friendships, based on shared values, not shared history, will nourish your new self. Empowerment, not loss. It's okay to grieve the end of a significant chapter, and be excited for a new one you get to write on your own terms. Here's how to cultivate that mindset. The what now? List, instead of focusing on what's lost, brainstorm what you'd like to explore, learn, or change about your life. Small steps turn into big leaps. Don't compare your journey. Everyone's timing for reinvention is different. Block out social media noise, and focus on your authentic path. Find your fellow renegades, seek out communities, online or in person, of other women reinventing after gray divorce. Their support and insights are invaluable. This chapter marks not an ending, but a courageous new beginning. You've already demonstrated incredible strength in making this life altering decision. Now, Let's channel that strength into building a future filled with purpose, meaningful connections, and a deep sense of being truly aligned with the amazing woman you've become along the way. Chapter 25, Uncoupling Consciously, Collaborative Divorce Strategies The idea that divorce has to be a scorched earth war is a damaging myth. Especially with children involved, finding ways to minimize hostility can provide a healthier foundation for everyone in the family as you restructure. What is collaborative divorce? The core principles. Mutual pledge, both parties and their attorneys sign an agreement that they will not go to court. This shift in itself reduces the adversarial atmosphere and encourages solutions over fighting. Team-based approach, in addition to each spouse having their own lawyer, you often bring in neutral specialists like a financial advisor and a child therapist. Transparency and information sharing. Emphasis on full disclosure of assets, and open communication, rather than each side strategically guarding information as leverage. Solutions focused, the goal becomes finding creative, win-win outcomes as much as possible, especially where children's well-being is concerned. Pros and cons to consider. Pros. Less emotionally destructive, while emotions will still be present. The focus on respectful solutions can prevent things from escalating into character assassinations and revenge tactics. Reduces cost, traditional litigation is expensive. Collaborative processes, 
while still requiring professionals, often result in lower overall costs. Maintain control, you and your ex, guided by the team, are the decision makers, instead of placing your fate in the hands of a judge. Prioritizes kids' needs, the ability to bring in a child specialist helps ensure CO parenting arrangements truly focus on your children's well-being, not just legal strategy. Cons Requires cooperation, this method only works if both parties are genuinely committed to it. If your ex is focused on punishment or exploiting the process for personal gain, it's not viable. Not for everyone, in situations of abuse, significant power imbalances, or hidden assets, traditional litigation may be necessary to protect your best interests. Finding the right team, not all divorce attorneys are trained in collaborative methods. Seek out those with a demonstrated track record for this process. Mediation, the middle ground. Mediation can be standalone, or part of a collaborative process. Here's how it works. The neutral guide, a trained mediator facilitates discussions between you and your ex, helping you clarify disagreements and find workable compromises. Less formal, no attorneys are necessarily present, though you can consult with them outside of mediation sessions. This can feel less intimidating. Success depends on willingness, if both sides are entrenched in their positions, mediation can stall. It works best when there's some openness to finding middle ground. Is a collaborative approach right for you? Ask yourself honestly. Trust factor, is there any baseline of respect left, or is it completely destroyed? Collaboration requires honesty and good faith effort, even amidst disagreement. Your ex's approach, have they expressed willingness to explore alternatives to battling it out in court? If they're spoiling for a fight, this might not be productive. Complex assets, the collaborative team approach works well for untangling complex situations, as you have direct access to neutral financial experts. The kids come first, if your top priority is minimizing the emotional fallout for your children, and you believe your ex also prioritizes this, collaborative divorce offers benefits over adversarial litigation. Finding the right professionals. Resources for locating trained specialists in your area. International Academy of Collaborative Professionals, IACP HTTPS slash slash www.collaborativepractice.com slash. Your local bar association, many have sections devoted to alternative dispute resolution with qualified referral lists. Word of mouth, if you know someone who utilized collaborative divorce, see if they can recommend their team. Prepare for the emotional side. Collaboration doesn't mean there won't be difficult moments. Remember. You still need your support system, even with the best intentions, old hurts may surface. Have a therapist, trusted friend, to debrief with outside the process. Celebrate small wins, focus on each positive step agreeing on a temporary custody schedule, reaching a compromise on selling a jointly owned asset. Self-care as defense, the emotional energy involved still needs release. Regular exercise, mindfulness practices, those restorative baths these prevent burnout. Choosing a collaborative approach is a courageous act prioritizing peace over warfare. It requires a willingness to confront difficult issues, while still striving for a respectful resolution. If it fits your circumstances, it can set the stage for a healthier post-divorce dynamic for both you and any children involved. Chapter 26, Beyond Survival, Post-Traumatic Growth After Divorce Divorce often feels like your world has been shattered. But, in the same way that broken bones sometimes heal back stronger, studies show that navigating major life crises can lead to not just a return to baseline, but a surpassing of your previous way of being. This is called post-traumatic growth, PTG. What PTG is, and isn't. It's crucial to note. PTG doesn't erase pain, it's not about pretending your divorce wasn't deeply difficult, it's about recognizing the strength and new self-understanding forged because of it. Not about toxic positivity, forcing cheerfulness actually hinders healing. Allow yourself to experience the full range of emotions, 
grief included, as part of the growth process. Growth takes time and effort, PTG doesn't happen passively. It requires intentional reflection and active choice to use your experience as a catalyst. The Pillars of Post-Traumatic Growth Research shows PTG often manifests in these key areas. Greater self-awareness, crisis strips away illusions. You learn your true strengths, limitations and what actually matters at a core level. Shifted priorities, relationships, work, where you invest your time and energy all come under scrutiny. You move towards living in greater alignment with your values. Deeper appreciation for life, cliché, but true. The preciousness of the everyday, moments of joy, become more vivid when contrasted with dark times. Enhanced compassion, your own struggles cultivate greater empathy for the pain of others, and a desire to contribute to easing suffering. Increased resilience, knowing you made it through this, you trust your ability to handle whatever the future throws at you. This is profoundly empowering. Techniques to Foster PTG Here's how to move from theory to practice. Reframe through journaling, instead of just venting, prompts like what surprised me about my own strength during this. Or one way I see myself differently now is. Guide you towards a growth mindset. Intentional exploration, don't wait for self-discovery to happen. Try that new thing, force yourself out of your comfort zone. Say yes to invitations you'd normally decline. Seek growth-minded communities, support groups focused on healing, online forums, even book clubs connecting with others on a similar journey accelerates your own PTG. Focus on meaning-making, the question why did this happen to me? Leads to a dead end. Instead, ask what can I learn from this? How can I use it to become a better version of myself? Nurturing a Resilient Mindset Resilience is the muscle that fuels PTG. Here's how to strengthen it. Self-compassion Self-criticism, the toughen-up approach backfires. Be as kind to yourself while navigating hard moments as you would be to a beloved friend. Control the controllables, obsessing over what's outside your control drains energy. Focus on what actions you can take, no matter how small to improve your situation. Celebrate every win, acknowledging progress, big and small, trains your brain to look for evidence of forward motion. This counteracts the negativity bias. Cultivate adaptive beliefs, notice those limiting thoughts, I'll never be happy again. Gently replace these with more empowering ones, this is hard, and temporary. I will build a beautiful life again. When everything feels too overwhelming. Some days PTG will feel like a distant possibility. That's okay. In those moments, focus on these anchors. Nourishment as self-care, sleep, nutritious food, gentle movement. Taking care of basic needs when emotionally battered is a vital form of resilience. Microscopic focus, thinking of building a whole new life feels daunting. Instead, Ask what's one tiny step I can take today that's aligned with my desired direction. Ask for help, reach out to trusted friends, therapy if needed. Isolation breeds despair, connection helps you remember you're not alone. Post-traumatic growth isn't a magic switch, but a winding path you actively choose with each step forward. Some days it's a fierce determination, others just a stubborn hope that refuses to be completely extinguished. Trust in the transformative power of time, intentional choices, and the incredible capacity for healing that exists within you. Chapter 27, When It Was Abuse, Healing from Emotionally and Physically Destructive Relationships It's crucial to state this unequivocally, your divorce was not your fault. Abuse is always the abuser's choice, and you deserve safety, healing, and the chance to thrive. Recognizing Types of Abuse Abuse extends far beyond physical violence. It can include verbal-slash-emotional abuse, name-calling, belittling, gaslighting, manipulating you into questioning your reality, isolating you from supportive people. Financial abuse, controlling your access to money, sabotaging your ability to work or build your own financial resources. Coercive control, 
monitoring your activities, dictating what you wear or who you can see, using threats or intimidation tactics to control your behavior. Technological abuse, using GPS tracking, stalking you on social media, demanding access to your passwords, pressuring you to send intimate images. Understanding the cycle of abuse. Sadly, abusive relationships often follow a predictable cycle. One tension building, criticism escalates, you feel like you're walking on eggshells, trying to appease them. Two abusive incident, physical violence, or outbursts of verbal cruelty, threats, destructive behavior. Three honeymoon phase, abuser apologizes profusely, promises change, showers you with attention, making you doubt your own perceptions. Four calm period, things seem normal for a while, creating hope this was a one-off, lulling you into a false sense of security, until the cycle repeats. Why leaving is so difficult? Fear of retaliation, this is valid, especially when escalating violence was a factor. Safety planning is crucial, more on this below. Trauma bonding, the intermittent honeymoon periods create a toxic attachment, making you crave those good times again, even as the abuse worsens. Undermine self-worth, constant criticism chips away at your confidence, making it hard to believe you deserve better, or can even function without them. Logistical hurdles, financial control, fear about child custody, lack of support network, all amplify the overwhelm. Specialized support is essential. Healing from abuse requires more than standard divorce resources. Seek out. Therapists specializing in domestic violence recovery, these professionals understand the complex mental and emotional manipulation survivors experience. Legal advocacy, many domestic violence programs offer legal help navigating complex matters like protective orders and custody battles. Support groups, connecting with other survivors breaks the isolation and offers validation that you are not alone and not crazy. Safety planning, even if already separated. If your ex is vindictive or you fear escalation, prioritize the following. Change passwords slash security, email, bank accounts, social media, even security system codes to your home. Document everything, screenshots of threatening texts, log of harassing calls. If physical incidents occur, photograph injuries, get medical documentation. Restraining order. Consult a lawyer about whether this is the right step. Sadly, it's paper, not a shield, but establishes a legal trail. Trusted network, alert a few friends slash family members to the potential for escalation. Have a code word if you need immediate extraction from a situation. Emotional healing from abuse. This takes time and dedicated effort. Focus on. Counteracting gaslighting. Keep a journal where you write down your truth, moments of strength, supportive things friends say, small victories. Reread this when their voice worms into your head. Re-establishing boundaries, practice saying no, even to small things. Reclaim the right to decide how you spend your time, energy, and who you allow into your space. Relearning normal, healthy relationships are based on respect, kindness, and reciprocity. This may feel foreign at first. Be patient with yourself as you adjust. Freedom from shame, the abuser's goal is to make you think you're unlovable and deserve their cruelty. Every act of self-love chips away at this lie. Resources for survivors. Remember, you are not alone. The National Domestic Violence Hotline, 1-800-799-SAFE, 7233 or https slash slash www.thehotline.org slash The Rape, Abuse and Incest National Network, Rain 1, 800-656-HOPE, 4673, or https slash slash www.rain.org slash Psychology Today Therapist Directory Filter by Domestic Violence HTTPS slash slash www.psychologytoday.com slash You're a survivor, not a victim. Leaving took immense courage. There may be setbacks in the healing process, 
and that's normal. But with the right support, you will not only rebuild your life, but you'll discover a version of yourself stronger than you ever imagined possible. Part X, Wellness for the Win Chapter 28, Moving Your Body, Exercise as Empowerment Think of exercise as potent medicine for both body and soul. Here's how it specifically combats the post-divorce fallout. Mood booster, physical activity releases endorphins, natural antidepressants. Even a short walk can shift you out of a funk. Stress buster, exercise helps regulate cortisol, the stress hormone, calming the nervous system and improving sleep. Confidence rebuilder, seeing your body get stronger, mastering new movements, cultivates a sense of I can do this. That extends to other areas of life. Reclaiming your power, when life felt out of control due to the divorce, intentionally taking charge of your physical well-being puts you back in the driver's seat. Community connection, group fitness classes, walking clubs, sports teams, all offer opportunities to expand your social circle. Beyond the weight loss myth If every fitness ad triggers negative self-talk, time for a mindset shift. Exercise is about feeling good in your skin, the increased energy, better sleep, that subtle glow, these quality of life boosts matter far more than the scale. Functionality and strength, being able to easily carry groceries, play with your kids or grandkids, tackle home improvement projects. Long-term health, reduced risk of heart disease, diabetes, even some forms of cancer. Exercise is the preventative medicine we should all be prescribed. Mind-body connection, movement pulls you out of rumination and back into the present moment. This kind of mindfulness is incredibly healing. Starting where you are, even if that's the couch. No judgment, compare yourself to your baseline, not some INSTagram fitness influencer. Celebrate walking for 10 minutes instead of zero. Small and consistent far better than intense bursts followed by burnout. Build those movement habits into your everyday routine. Find your why, not how you look in a bathing suit, but how you want to feel. This is your sustainable motivation fuel. Permission to experiment, if you hated how running felt in your 20s, you don't have to torture yourself now. Explore a variety of possibilities with curiosity. Movement modalities to explore. There's something for everyone, regardless of fitness level. Walking, the underrated superpower, accessible, free, can be done anywhere. Aim for 30 minutes most days, at a brisk enough pace to raise your heart rate. Strength training, building muscle is your friend, don't be intimidated by barbells. Body weight exercises, resistance bands, even lifting soup cans are effective. This protects bone density and metabolism as you age. Dance it out, Zumba, salsa classes, even just putting on your favorite music and dancing at home pure joyful movement. Yoga and Pilates, mindful movement, great for stress relief, flexibility and building core strength, with many modifications for beginners. Nature immersion, hiking, swimming. Kayaking combining exercise with the restorative benefits of being outdoors is a powerful combo. Overcoming gym intimidation. If the thought of walking into a crowded gym fills you with anxiety, try. Home workouts, countless amazing resources online, from free YouTube videos to subscription apps to personalize your fitness plan. Buddy system, ask a friend to try out a new class with you. Having a workout partner boosts accountability and fun. Small studios, find a yoga studio or Pilates class with a smaller, more intimate atmosphere for a less intimidating experience. Off-peak hours, if gyms are unavoidable, go mid-morning or early afternoon when they're less crowded. Listen to your body. Rest days are sacred, overdoing it leads to injury and burnout. Schedule at least one full rest day per week and listen to those signals of needing an extra break. Honoring limitations, old injuries, chronic pain. Work with a trainer or physical therapist to find modifications so you can move safely and effectively. Nourish to thrive, exercise works best when you're properly fueling your body. Hydration, 
balanced meals these will maximize your progress. It's a journey, not a destination, some days you'll feel strong and energized, others, it'll be a slog. Showing up consistently is what builds lasting transformation. Think of this chapter as a playful invitation. Is there a form of movement you've always wanted to try, or one you enjoyed in the past? Let's ditch the shoulds and rediscover the simple joy of inhabiting your strong, capable, amazing body. Chapter 29, Feeding Your Soul, Nourishment from the Inside Out Eating isn't just about physical sustenance, it's an act that touches all aspects of well-being. Especially during times of emotional upheaval, shifting how you approach food becomes a potent tool for reclaiming your sense of peace and vitality from the inside out. The Divorce Diet Trap Let's address the two common extremes. Neglect and the chaos snack, forgetting to eat, subsisting on caffeine and takeout, then raiding the pantry at midnight. This leads to energy crashes and amplifies the feeling of your life being out of control. Emotional eating and self-soothing with sugar, comfort food in moderation is fine. When it becomes your main coping mechanism, it creates a shame spiral, and further disconnects you from your body's true signals. Mindful eating, your superpower. Mindful eating has nothing to do with diets or deprivation. It's about tuning in, are you eating because you are truly physically hungry, or is it stress, boredom, or sadness masquerading as a craving? Savoring the senses, slow down and pay attention to the colors, textures, aromas of your food. This amps up simple meals into a pleasurable experience. No more food guilt, notice those judgmental thoughts, I shouldn't be eating this, and gently replace them with curiosity. What was the trigger for reaching for that snack? Hunger vs. Fullness scale, learn to listen to your body's I'm content signals versus always eating until uncomfortably stuffed. Breaking the stress eating cycle. Here's how to break free from using food to soothe. Name the feeling, before reaching for a snack, pause and honestly label the emotion I'm feeling overwhelmed or I'm really lonely right now. Non-food coping toolkit, what else soothes you? A 5-minute dance party, venting to a friend, taking a hot bath, a walk in nature, expand your self-care options. Out of sight, out of mind, don't keep tempting trigger foods in the house. Remove the option of mindless autopilot snacking. Hydration as hunger check, often we mistake thirst for hunger. Drink a large glass of water, then reassess if you actually need a snack. Making nourishment easy, and delicious. Healthy doesn't have to be complicated or time-consuming. Prep Power Hour, on Sunday, chop veggies for snacking or quick salads, hard boil some eggs, bake a batch of sweet potatoes for ready-to-use bases throughout the week. The well-stocked pantry, canned beans, tuna, nuts, whole grain pasta, olive oil, having these basics means you can always throw together a simple, nutritious meal, even when tired. Flavor boosters, keep a jar of pesto, a lemon, some good quality spices, simple ways to transform basic ingredients into something way tastier. Batch cooking and freezer friends, when you make a soup or stew, double the recipe and freeze portions for those nights you truly have zero energy. No recipe recipes, stir fries, omelets, grain bowls with whatever leftover roasted veggies and proteins you have, easy. Minimal cleanup meals. Simple and nourishing recipe starters. To inspire you, here are a few ideas with endless variations. 5 minute superfood smoothie, frozen berries, handful of spinach, scoop of Greek yogurt, protein powder if desired, splash of almond milk. Salad beyond boring, mixed greens base, add leftover roasted chicken or canned chickpeas, cherry tomatoes, cucumber avocado, drizzle of olive oil and balsamic. Protein-packed pasta, whole grain pasta, sautéed kale, white beans, sprinkle of parmesan. A complete meal in under 15 minutes. The I have zero energy dinner, quality whole grain crackers, hummus, pre-cut veggie sticks, and a hard-boiled egg. Sometimes, simply nourishing yourself is the win. 
The Pleasure Principle Eating mindfully allows you to truly enjoy your food, instead of it feeling either like fuel or punishment. The Fancy Plate Trick Put even a simple meal on your prettiest plate, light a candle. This elevates the experience, making it feel more special. Eating is self-care, create a distraction-free eating environment. No scrolling on your phone. Savor each bite, it's a mini meditation. Permission for treats, deprivation backfires. Schedule a mindful indulgence of your favorite dessert once a week, and relish it fully. Think of this chapter as the beginning of a kinder, more intuitive food journey. Let's experiment. What's one small tweak you could make to your eating habits for the week ahead? Maybe it's prepping those snack veggies, trying a new nourishing recipe, or committing to phone-free meals. Nourishment is one simple, yet profound way to care for yourself, body and soul. Chapter 30, Rituals and Routines for Resilience Rituals and routines may feel rigid, but especially during periods of chaos, they serve as anchors. They signal to your mind and body I'm taking care of myself, even on days when that feels hard to believe. The power of a morning routine. How you start your day sets the tone for everything that follows. Instead of chaotic rushing. Ease into the morning, set your alarm slightly earlier, even 10 minutes makes a difference. Resist snoozing it throws off your sleep cycle. Hydration first, drink a big glass of water before caffeine. Replenishing fluids after a night's sleep jump starts your system. Movement matters, could be a full at-home workout, a 15-minute yoga session, or a brisk walk around the block. Gets the blood flowing and boosts your mood. No news or social media scrolling, that can wait. Give your mind a break from the onslaught. Reducing the early morning cortisol, stress hormone, spike. Nourishing start, even if it's simple, a mindful breakfast sets you up for better food choices and stable blood sugar throughout the day. Rituals, mind over matter. Rituals add a dash of meaning to the mundane. It's not about being strict, but carving out small pockets of peace in your day. The sacred pause, a mid-afternoon cup of tea, savored slowly rather than gulped at your desk. A few minutes of focused deep breathing. Transitioning into off mode, create a clear signal to yourself that the workday is over. Change into comfy clothes, play a favorite album, light a candle. Digital sunset, power down screens at least an hour before bed. The blue light disrupts melatonin production, essential for quality sleep. Gratitude as bookends, Start your day jotting down three things you're grateful for and end it by reflecting on one good thing that happened, no matter how small. The importance of sleep hygiene. Sleep is when your body and mind repair. Skimping on it wreaks havoc on mood, energy levels, and exacerbates anxiety. Aim for. Consistent timing, same bedtime and wake up, even on weekends. This regulates your circadian rhythm. The wind down routine. Dim the lights, a warm bath, no screens, reading a calming book. Signal to your body it's time to prep for rest. Bedroom as sleep sanctuary, cool, dark, quiet to the best of your ability. Invest in a good pillow and cozy bedding, it makes a surprising difference. When you can't sleep, don't fight it. Get up, do a boring activity, folding laundry, under low light for 20 minutes then try again. Routine vs. Rigidity, find your flow. The goal isn't to become a drill sergeant with yourself. It's about flexible framework, maybe your morning routine is non-negotiable, evenings are looser. That's okay. Find what works for you. Experiment and track, try new things, notice how it impacts your mood and energy levels. This awareness informs your ideal structure. Don't be a perfectionist, skipped your workout this morning? Did take out instead of cooking? Don't spiral into guilt. Tomorrow is a fresh start. When routines break down, during extra stressful times or bouts of disrupted sleep, don't give up completely. Focus on the absolute baseline even 5 minutes of a calm ritual is better than none. 
customize your toolkit. Consider what brings a sense of grounding or pleasure. Creative rituals, painting, sketching, playing a musical instrument, even for short bursts, sparks joy and shifts you out of stressed thought loops. Nature connection, even a 10-minute sit in a park, intentionally observing the sounds and textures of nature, is powerfully calming for the nervous system. Aromatherapy boost, certain scents have scientifically proven effects. Lavender for relaxation, citrus for an energy zing. Experiment with essential oil blends. Nostalgic touchstones, an old family recipe that brings back comforting memories, a playlist of songs that transport you to happy times, little reminders of joy are potent in dark moments. Routines and rituals are not a magic fix to make all your problems disappear. However, they provide a sense of control amidst the unpredictability. It's your way of saying to yourself, I'm worth taking care of, even during hard times. Part 11, Faith and Finding Meaning Chapter 31, Spirituality and Divorce, Seeking Solace and Strength It's important to differentiate between spirituality and religion. Spirituality is your individual connection to something greater than yourself this could be a traditional God concept, the forces of nature a belief in the interconnectedness of all beings. Religion provides the structure, doctrines, rituals, and sense of community around those beliefs. Divorce can disrupt both. When faith falters, it's okay to be angry, to question everything you were taught. Why me? If you believe in a loving, just God, your pain can lead to resentment. What did I do to deserve this? Is a natural, if unanswerable question. Broken trust, if you prayed for your marriage to be saved, to be given strength, and it still ended, it can lead to a sense of betrayal by the divine. Doubt is disloyalty, in some religious traditions, questioning is seen as a lack of faith, making you feel isolated within your community when you need support the most. Religious communities, a double-edged sword. Sadly, the reactions of religious communities can amplify, rather than ease the pain of divorce. Judgment under the guise of concern, unsolicited advice about how you should have tried harder to save your marriage can reopen fresh wounds. Ostracism and shame, some faith communities openly shun divorced members, fueling a sense of profound unworthiness. Well-meaning but harmful platitudes, God has a plan or everything happens for a reason, while well-intentioned, can feel dismissive of your very real suffering. Finding your way back to the sacred. Spiritual healing from divorce is rarely a linear process. It involves Permission to grieve, your relationship with the divine is allowed to be messy, complex. Honor the anger, the disappointment, as legitimate emotions. Seek supportive spaces, find those safe few within your faith community, or outside it, who will validate your feelings without rushing to offer solutions. Re-examine beliefs, what still offers comfort. What no longer rings true. You get to decide what your spirituality looks like going forward. Nature as sanctuary, the awe-inspiring power of nature can rekindle a sense of connection to something vast and timeless when human-made systems fail you. Spiritual practices without dogma, meditation, mindfulness. Acts of service disconnecting these from rigid religious doctrine can make them powerful healing tools. Reconcile, or release. With time, you may find your way back into a modified version of your former faith. For others, it's a break, either temporary or permanent. There is no right or wrong answer. Focus on values, if kindness, community and the pursuit of justice are core to your beliefs you can live those with or without formal religious affiliation. Rituals as comfort may be the ritual practice, not the specific theology attached, still brings peace. Light candles, pray in your own words, adapt what works. Community reimagined, can you find a spiritual community, even outside your denomination, that accepts you as is, without focus on your marital status? Your inner wellspring of strength. Divorce can crack you open to a whole new depth of spirituality. Here's how that often manifests. Resilience as sacred, recognizing what you've endured, 
not through blind faith, but by finding power within yourself, is its own form of spiritual transformation. Empathy without judgment, your pain doesn't make you bitter, it amplifies your compassion for all those facing hidden struggles. This is a spiritual act. Moments of grace amidst the chaos, noticing the beauty in everyday life a child's laughter, a perfect sunset becomes a defiant act of gratitude, a silent prayer. Resources for exploration and support. You don't have to navigate this alone. Spiritual directors slash counselors beyond your tradition, they offer a non-judgmental space for processing faith-related grief and exploring new paths. Books by authors wrestling with similar issues, examples include Barbara Brown Taylor's An Altar in the World, Nadia Bowles Weber's Pastrix, Rachel Held Evans' work. Online communities for spiritual but not religious, these offer connection with others who don't fit neatly inside religious boxes, but still crave connection to something greater. Spirituality, in its purest form, is about finding comfort amidst the chaos, rediscovering meaning even when life falls apart, and connecting to a source of strength greater than your individual pain. Divorce may be the catalyst that breaks down the old ways, but trust that you can rebuild an authentic, resilient, even more beautiful faith life in your own way, on your own terms. Part 12, Unique Journeys Chapter 32, Divorce for LGBTQ and Individuals, Navigating Additional Layers Divorce disrupts all areas of one's life, but within the LGBTQ and community, this disruption may cut even deeper, requiring specialized support and a nuanced understanding to ensure your well-being is prioritized throughout the process. Legal Complexities While same-sex marriage is now federally recognized, legal hurdles may still exist depending on your state or country. Custodial Concerns Some states, despite marriage equality, have biases against non-biological parents in custody battles, especially if the child was adopted or conceived via sperm donation. Outdated legal documents, insure wills, health care proxies, and any financial power of attorney forms reflect your current identity and relationship status. Discrimination in the system, unfortunately, bias can still exist among judges and mediators. Vetting professionals to ensure they are LGBTQ plus affirming is vital. Societal stigma and its fallout. Beyond the legal fight, LGBTQ and individuals often face added emotional pain stemming from minority stress, the chronic stress of living in a society that still often marginalizes LGBTQ and identities can amplify divorce pain. Internalized homophobia slash transphobia, sadly, this can cause some to blame themselves for the end of their marriage, hindering healing. Fear of I told you so's, unsupportive family members may use the divorce as proof that same-sex relationships are inherently unstable. Diminished sense of community, for some, chosen family within the LGBTQ and community provides their primary support system. Divorce can disrupt these bonds, intensifying loneliness. Finding LGBTQ plus specific support. Resources are key for navigating both the emotional and logistical layers. LGBTQ plus affirming therapists, look for those with experience in divorce recovery, as well as addressing minority stress and any internalized self-stigma. Legal representation specializing in LGBTQ and family law, many bar associations have LGBTQ and sections, and can provide referrals to knowledgeable attorneys. Community centers and support groups, these offer a safe space to process emotions, receive validation, and feel less alone amidst the added challenges. Online resources, organizations like the National Center for Lesbian Rights, https slash slash www.nglrights.org slash or pflag https slash slash pflag.org slash offer information and supportive communities chosen family more crucial than ever forging and nurturing strong bonds with your chosen family becomes essential clear communication of needs true friends understand you may need extra support leaning on them doesn't make you a burden Boundaries with unsupportive people, limit contact with those who use your divorce to perpetuate harmful societal narratives about LGBTQ and relationships. Reconnecting with lost support, 
was there LGBTQ and community involvement that fell by the wayside during your marriage? Re-engagement can ease the sense of isolation. Creating new chosen family, open yourself to new connections volunteering for LGBTQ and causes, seeking online support groups, or even a chosen family speed dating type event can be transformative. Navigating family of origin dynamics. Coming out anew, especially if your divorce reveals aspects of your identity kept hidden in your marriage, can be daunting. Safety first, if you anticipate hostile or unsafe reactions, prioritize protecting yourself. Coming out at the same time as disclosing a divorce may be overwhelming for all involved. Set limits on judgmental advice, they may try to frame the divorce as a direct result of you not being in a heterosexual relationship. Set firm, loving boundaries. Find your allies, is there a sibling, a cousin, who can buffer you from unsupportive relatives? Focus on those who offer unconditional love. You don't owe endless explanations, it's okay to say my sexual orientation slash gender identity is not up for debate. I need you to respect who I am. Reclaiming your narrative. The end of a marriage doesn't negate the love you shared, nor does it change your right to thrive in a healthy, fulfilling relationship in the future. Here's how to counter the negative societal messages. Reframe the story, divorce can be a powerful act of self-love, choosing authenticity over living a stifled existence. Seek out positive representation, thankfully. Stories of successful, long-term LGBTQ and partnerships are becoming more visible. These offer hope when the future feels uncertain. Activism as healing, channeling your experience into advocating for LGBTQ and inclusive laws or supporting organizations fostering equality transforms pain into a sense of purpose. Navigating divorce as a member of the LGBTQ and community demands a fierce determination to advocate for yourself at every step and to surround yourself with those who see and celebrate all of who you are. You deserve a life, and future relationships, built on truth, mutual respect and the joy of being fully seen. Chapter 33, Cultural Considerations in Divorce, Beliefs, Traditions and Expectations It's vital to state that cultures are not monolithic. There's variation within, yet, broad trends exist impacting your decisions how your choice to divorce is perceived, and the support systems, or lack thereof, available to you. Family honor and what will people say. In collectivist cultures, focus on family reputation can outweigh individual needs. Shame as a weapon, bringing dishonor onto the family may be used to pressure you to stay in an unhappy, even destructive, marriage. Duty overruled. Your right to pursue your own happiness may clash with the cultural expectation that women endure for the sake of the family's external appearance. Intergenerational trauma, did your mother, or other female relatives, silently endure within their marriages? This pattern, while harmful, can feel hard to break free from. Extended family pressure, well-meaning, yet harmful, interference from aunts, uncles, cousins, the entire network can feel suffocating. Stigma within your community The degree of stigma varies across cultures, but often women are disproportionately impacted. The Scarlet D, even if no fault is implied, divorced women may be ostracized, seen as less desirable, impacting social and even professional opportunities. Whispers and judgments, gossip networks within tight-knit communities can be brutal, particularly if children are involved. Limited support systems, if women are primarily socialized to connect with other married women within your community, divorce can leave them painfully isolated. Dating after divorce, cultural expectations around dating or remarriage can add further pressure, especially for older women seeking new partners. When religion intersects with culture, religious beliefs tied to your cultural identity can create additional struggles. Sin and Divine Punishment some faiths view divorce as morally wrong, leading to internalized guilt and a sense of having disappointed a higher power. Limited religious support, within certain faiths, divorced women may be excluded from rituals or leadership positions within their religious community. Barriers to remarriage, religious laws or customs regarding remarriage, 
especially for women with children, can create logistical and emotional hardship. Navigating Complex Dynamics It takes courage to prioritize your well-being over cultural expectations. Here's starting points. Differentiate culture from truth, what parts of your culture nourish you, which feel oppressive. You don't need to abandon your entire heritage to liberate yourself. Honoring ancestors while forging a new path, can you draw strength from female ancestors who defied the odds, even in small ways? Their courage fuels your own. Therapy from the right provider, seek a therapist who understands the cultural nuances you face both from your background, and the dominant culture you live within. Finding your people, are there support groups for divorced women from your culture? Online forums? Connecting with others breaking similar ground is crucial. Reclaiming your autonomy. Guilt and the desire to placate your family are natural reactions. However, your needs matter, the cultural script that women always sacrifice for others is harmful. Repeat the mantra, my happiness is not selfish. Boundaries are brave, decide how much information you share with extended family, learn to deflect intrusive questions, or even limit contact if necessary for your mental health. You define duty, if you have children, your primary duty is creating a happy, healthy home for them. This may involve ending a marriage that is harmful to everyone involved. Re-ritualizing your life, incorporating aspects of your cultural traditions on your own terms, separate from community pressure, can be healing. Finding pockets of support. Don't underestimate the power of even a few supportive allies. Safe spaces within culture, are there progressive groups within your faith, elders who take a more compassionate stance? women's organizations focused on empowerment? Allies from other backgrounds, supportive friends demonstrating the joys of a self-determined life, even if they don't share your culture, bolsters your resolve. The chosen family option, as your biological family or community disappoints, invest deeply in those friends who stand by you unconditionally. Organizations geared for your specific context, depending on your background, there may be support networks for immigrant women navigating divorce, faith-based groups for those reconciling with their spirituality post-divorce, etc. The path may feel lonely at first. But every step you take towards authenticity carves space for other women in similar situations. Sometimes, the bravest form of cultural preservation is boldly demonstrating there's more than one way to be a strong, whole woman within a given heritage. The ancestors would be proud.